watching Rogers TV. Good evening and welcome to Rogers TV. My name is Aaron Zola and I am your host for tonight's first Sutherland Cup playoff game. Today we have the seventh seed, the St. Thomas Stars facing off against the second seed, London Nationals. In today's matchup, the story of the game brought to you by Arby's is that the London Nationals have won six straight against the St. Thomas Stars. Despite St. Thomas having massive controversies, they have won three games straight under new head coach Joe Daniels. Now for the boys upstairs, Kyle and Jeremy. Thanks, Aaron. And it should be an interesting matchup between these two teams. Uh, going back to last year, just to start off, uh, St. Thomas did win game one when these two teams matched up in the playoffs. Uh, London did go on to win that series in six and uh, hoping to try to make the re do something similar again here tonight. Well, anything can happen in the playoffs, and it showed last year with St. Thomas beating the Nationals in game one right here at the Western Fair. And the same could be said heading into tonight. The regular season records no longer matter. The playoffs are about building your team's depth, playing physical hockey, tight checking. So expect both these teams to come off the hop, fully energized, ready to go here tonight. Absolutely. Take a look at what we see between these two teams. Uh, very drastic differences in how these two teams approach the game here. Uh, London, one of the highest scoring teams in the entire GOJHL. 228 goals for the C there. Um, power play, it's going to be big and important for both teams. Both offering well over 20%. You know, if some, one team gets a power play, it's going to mean a lot. With the high-powered offense that the St. Thomas Stars have, that's going to be their big hope if they want to try to come away with a series win here. Yes, and for the Nationals, it's also trying to stay out of the box. They led the league this year in penalties, so heading into this postseason, they're going to want to really clean that up, make sure that they don't make that mental mistake of going on to that special teams and allowing a team like the St. Thomas Stars with guys like Nickel and Levin to be that dangerous on their power play. Speak about Nickel as well. Nickel, 10 points over the six games these two teams played. You know if the Stars have a chance, the puck's going to be on his stick. Oh, yeah, especially when you have that type of guy. I mean... Nickel made a call up for the London Knights here recently, got his first OHL goal, but then carrying the St. Thomas Stars team heading into this postseason, I expect him to put up big numbers here in round one. On the other side for the Nationals, Sanavi eight points, Bauer seven points, and Lucas Chart nine points. The big three for the Nationals, the three-headed monster they have alongside Sam O'Reilly, who was out for some of the games this year between the Stars. Uh, you know they're going to be put a lot of pressure on those guys to, out to produce here. And playoff experience matters, right? For Ryland Bowers, this is now his third year with the Nationals. Being into this playoff experience, he knows what it takes to play in this postseason run. So it's guys like Bowers, Chard, and for Sam O'Reilly, his first year rookie year, He's going to need to step up into this postseason. I expect big things from those big three. Absolutely. And as you, as we said right at the top, Aaron mentioned this is the two versus seven matchup here in the playoffs. Uh, we take a look at what our playoff bracket actually worked out to be. There's a lot of still moving and changing going on as we were getting into that last game. See the number one seed there, the Leamington Flyers. They'll be taking on the Sarnia Legionnaires. You have the Nationals and the Stars here for no two and seven. Three and six, St. Mary's Lincoln's held on to that third seed, and they'll be taking on the Strathroy Rockets. And then the four or five, you have the LaSalle Vipers against the Chatham Maroons. That should be a very hard-hitting series. Absolutely, and you know, looking at those bottom two, St. Mary's and Strathroy, we've seen the Rockets come into London and play very tough against the Nationals, and I expect the same thing against the St. Mary's Lincoln's club, where the Rockets are a very good team on the road. So for them, that'll be an interesting matchup. And like you said, LaSalle and Chatham. Chatham eliminated London in a fast few playoff series. So that's another team that the Nationals maybe do not want to see in round number two if they get there. So certainly an exciting matchup for all the teams in the Western Conference as round one starts here tonight in London. Now the fun thing about it, Oleda playoffs end up going is you can always have that one surprise team that really shows up. I remember a few years ago it was these very same St. Thomas Stars who shocked everybody, came up as like I believe it was the sixth seed and ended up going to the Western Conference Finals. So there is a potential for one of those lower seeds to really step up. It was a big cluster but in those middle teams for uh, trying to jar for those positions and the top four teams were all very close within 10 points of each other. So it's still anybody's game. Nobody has an easy path to the Western Conference Final. Absolutely, and that's just it. When you have that dark horse type team, we've seen it in the National Hockey League where the Los Angeles Kings 
they were an eight seed and they got all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. So certainly a team like the St. Thomas Stars who are a seven seed, they've got the roster that can easily go on a real good run here in the Western Conference playoffs and maybe head towards another Sutherland Cup. Now, bringing up what we said, the Stars, who they need to succeed here, it's all going to be on Michael Levin. Uh, was the, the league leader in goals and power play goals. 42 goals in 33 games. The uh, London Knights prospect has absolutely fan, been fantastic this year. And you got to know the, uh, the, the, go, the boys over at the London Knights are ecstatic for this kid next year. Oh, when you're a London Knights fan, you're going to be excited about Levin being on your roster come next season. But for... This time right now, you know, even that looking at his regular season numbers, he was missing time due to World Juniors and other opportunities where he's come back in here and he's just dominating. He had a five goal performance here during the regular season this year. So certainly a guy you really want to be careful with heading into this playoff matchup. Absolutely. Now the one person he's going to have to beat we will send down and look at our goaltenders for tonight. And that man right there, Joe Ranger, uh, who came in midway through this season for the London Nationals. 13 games played, 6-4-2. Don't let those numbers surprise you. He has been phenomenal every time he has been hit between the pipes for the Nationals. And on the other side, Connor Bradford, another addition mid-season for the St. Thomas Stars. Numbers were fantastic for this previous team and looking to transition that as well over to the Stars for this playoff run. Well, it was a big depth move for the St. Thomas Stars. I mean, they also had Owen Wilmore in their crease and they flipped him to the Stratford Warriors for Connor Bradford in, a, in essence. So bringing in Bradford, an experienced goaltender here. Again, he could be a guy that's going to be key for the St. Thomas Tigers to make a postseason run. The same can be said for Joe Ranger as well. Ranger was brought here to London to win postseason games. And now that we are starting this postseason run, expect Joe Ranger to play at his best. We've seen him play a lot of big games here at the Western Fair. None bigger than game one here tonight. Absolutely, and with that, we are going to send out a ice bubble for our opening center.
As we get set for our opening face-off, we take a look at our keys of the game. Tonight's keys of the game are brought to you by Paul Salvador Masonry for St. Thomas. It is the third period in six games against London this year. The Stars have scored in four of them, but lost all six. They were outscored 19 to five in the third periods of those games. And for the London Nationals, it is the power play. London finished first in the Western Conference on the power play at 25.3%. They went 11 for 24, 45.8% against the Stars in their six games this season. Exciting matchup, the Battle of Highbury Avenue. The London Nationals, they decided to do March Mullets for this opening round matchup, and we'll see if they decide to keep it in this postseason run. We'll see if how long, it, hey, how long can they grow is the big question. As they, we get set for our opening faceoff, Stars win the get the puck, sent down the offensive zone. Connolly will move it up the wing. Gets up to Ryan, who gets his pocket pick, set behind the net. Picked up there by Levin. Puck be sent down length of the ice. We'll get our first whistle of the game for Ison. As we get a look there at Sam O'Reilly, the rookie of the month for the month of February, and also the player of the month as we saw he was recognized during the pregame ceremony and another guy that London Knights fans can look forward to seeing next season. Face off one by the Nationals. Connolly is going to move it up the wing. Picked up by Palmer. Palmer across. He has right he has the angle and right to the middle of the net. Now pick up at Ludington. Ludington, he's going to come in, takes a shot. Kicked aside there by Bradford. Another shot from distance goes right to the bread basket. Bradford will hold on for a whistle. Good early pressure here by the Nationals. They work that puck around and a good shot right on to Bradford as he is tested early on in tonight's matchup. Shots are already 2-0 for the Nationals as they send out their top line with Wood, Bowers, and Chard out on the ice. Face off one by the Stars. They're going to try to move it up the wall. 
Gets to the blue line, now brought out. Across the blue line by Levin. Brian Nicholson against Lewis for offside. Yes, a close call right the blue line. And lots of alumni in the building with, with these two teams. George Diaco, former London National. Logan Mayu, former London National. The London Knights put out a video on Twitter earlier this afternoon having their alumni, both the Nationals and the Stars, pick the series. And obviously for guys like Diaco and Mayu, they believe that the series could be over in four. Many players on the, uh, the current London Nationals played for one of these two teams. And uh, impressive to see that many players graduate to the big club. Pop down low. Star is going to hold his own. Sends it down low. Almost gets the nickel. Then turned around. Picked up now by Bowers. Bowers going to flip it up to Wood. Wood flexes it in his feet. Back up to the stick. Puts it out front over to Chard. Chard can't get a shot off. Wood uh, gets a hit down low. Pins the puck along the board. Bouncing up. Picked up now by Chard. Chard tries to move it out front. Jakes is going to carry it behind the net still. The stick of Bowers, and the stick of Bowers, loses it. Coming out the wall is Fraser. Now dumping in the offensive zone. Out comes Ranger. Ranger bobbles the puck. He, Ranger's just going to throw a hit right on the wall. Helps himself out. Comes to the blue line. Girth, he takes a shot. That goes off a of body out front. On the boards on the far side. Sanity, he's going to try to speed his way around his man. He gets stopped up. Going to be turned back the other way by Seminara. He comes up to the red line and he'll take it in the offensive zone. Turn around quickly by Stubgeon. Pass intended for Milne ends up going wrist behind him. Now about to be picked up by Girth and he'll move it out. Sned dumps in the offensive zone. Stubgeon's going to go into, into the corner. He takes a hit. Gonna follow up the puck. Picked up and held on to by Dobbin. Back to Girth. Now to Jackson Dobbin again. He takes a shot. That hits the body out front. Nashville's going to turn it back the other way. Milne across the red line, dumps into the far corner. Sandby tries to get there. Dobbin gets there first. Thrown down in the corner by Stubgeon. Nashville's collect the puck. French cross ice pass intended for Stubgeon. Couldn't quite handle it. Finds it now, throws it down low. Nerf gets it up to the blue line. Dobbin will carry it out. Red line and in for Dobbin as the Stars go off for a change. With an errant pass by Duarte, just misses Stubgeon. Good collect to throw out the boards. That goes off a skate, goes right to the middle of the ice. French will carry it out. Across the blue line, over to Carson. Carson back to French. French can't get it, it's a little bit too far behind him. Up turn around now, Jenkins. He tries to move it up, that gets stopped up. Turn the other way, French gets a hold of it. Nashville's offside at the time, they have to go touch up. On pass the other way, go all oh, just misses Phillips. Lunnington, spin move, Ooh. lose control of the puck, ends up going behind the Nationals net. Yeah. Yeah. Ranger will pick it up. Bank off the wall to Carson. Carson across the blue line. Left for Palmer. Palmer across site. Tries to get it over to streaking with Duarte. Duarte again tries to get a hold of the puck. Let's stick check. Connolly throws it behind the net. Carson. Almost gets picked off and pushed back up the up the wall by Lorzel. Palmer now, he fights off a hit. Some help from O'Reilly. Connolly from the blue line, he takes a shot. And that catches Bradford just under the arm, and he'll hang on for the whistle. Well, we're going to take a look at some playoff physicality, and it's coming from Joe Ranger. Puck gets dumped in. You see he goes out to play this puck. He bobbles it and then does the right thing, stays to the inside of the puck, does a little bit of professional interference, I shall say, takes his man out, goes back into the crease, no harm, no foul, and now he'll just make sure that he doesn't do that same bobble again. Nice clean face-off win by the Stars, ends up going out a stanchion. Almost goes horribly wrong for the Stars, but they will recover the puck. Picked up and brought out by Lorzell, gets it to the blue line, quickly turned around, in comes Ryan. Ryan tries to put it across ice. He gets it there, but Palmer can't get a stick on him. Norzell gets it up. Over across the blue line. Fusion moves it in. That goes around the ice. He's going to come out to Girth in his own zone. Up to Levin. 
level just deflecting the offensive zone. Connolly will be there to pick it up. Over to Luddington. Isaiah Luddington's got some room to move. He's going to carry it in. Ties the toe drag. Can't get past Levin. Clearing attempt gets blocked by Ryan. Back over to O'Reilly. He can't get a shot off cleanly. Buckley sent around by Girth. Picked up now by Char. Char pressure behind the net. Puck comes out front. Takes a shot. That one just hits the side of the net. O'Reilly collects it. He's going to try to work the puck back. He's got Levin right on top of him. Gets the puck over to Wood. Wood gets across ice. Gets it to Lettington. Lettington can't quite get the shot off. Puck behind the net. Lights. He gets put down hard on the ice. Stars try to counterattack. Puck just put a little too far out of the reach. Gowan across the blue line. Draws for Bowers. Bowers into the middle. Line guard. Shot pass over to Bowers. Bowers can't get a clean shot off. Almost gets stripped of the puck and does. Gowan tries to pinch in, but quickly turned the other way by Alexander. Across the blue line, Stars just get lift right in the middle is Nickel. Vandenberg will send it down to Alexander. Alexander behind the net to Nickel. Nickel oh, still maintains possession. To back to the blue line to Jenkins. Back over to Alexander. He takes a shot. That one just misses wide. McGowan on the far side will collect it and clear the zone. Not picked up by Francis. Gets it up to the blue line and over. And the stars want the clear as Nationals get a chance to breathe and regroup. Weingart over to McGowan. McGowan, he's going to just dump it in. Milne will be the first man on the puck. He gets pushed off the puck by Jenkins. Still stays with him, though, and forces a turnover up to Thompson. Thompson down in the corner. Puts it in the middle of the end for Sanaby. Sanaby can't quite get a shot off. Back at the blue line, held by Weingart. Sends it down behind the net for Milne. Milne, Sanaby, he takes a shot. That hits the leg and then goes out of play. Play starting to pick. Play starting to pick up a bit here, and as always, our first period is brought to you by JNF Concrete and Ready Mix. A bit of a, a bit of back and forth action here. Both teams getting chances. Uh, majority in favor of the Nationals so far. And again, both teams doing a great job on the defensive side of the puck of keeping the players to the outside, not allowing any grade A scoring opportunities. And that's a key thing in this postseason is being able to play a tight checking and not allow those big mistakes. Sanity will get up to the blue line. Has to send it back out of the zone. Tipped in off the skate of Milne. Nationals get a steal right back. Might have get it across. This gets it clogged up right at the red line. On the stick of Pace Raw. Gets a bit of room to move. He's going to carry it across the blue line himself. Dumps it in, finds it himself again. Puck gets bounced off him by Lorzell up the wall. And out in the neutral zone. Bounce in the feet of Duarte. Now gets picked up, brought in by Medeiros. Sent behind the net, picked up now by Stubgen. Sends it up to Carson. Carson tries to get a man into the middle of the ice. That gets blocked. Now tries to get back up to French. Still gets blocked. Stars doing a really great job of clogging up the neutral ice. Medeiros picks it up. He gets knocked down. Shot at a sharp angle. Catches Ranger up high, and he has to make his first tough save of the game. Good job with a keep in at the blue line. Right away as the Nationals get away. Or pardon me, the St. Thomas gets away, and a quick little shot from the far near side. And Joe Ranger is able to slide across and hold on to that and make a save. No rebound available. Shots now 3-2 to here as we're approaching the midway section of this first period. And we've seen a lot of, like you mentioned, Kyle, back and forth. But again, not many shots towards the net. The teams are trying to find that guy in the middle where there's open space. But so far, there is none so far yet. Levin wins the faceoff, gets it over to Nickel. Nickel walks in. He takes a shot. That hits a body out front. Ranger couldn't see it. Puck stays in the offensive zone. Girth sends it down to Levin. Levin cross ice. Gets it over to get over. Gets tipped out front. National Duke collected in front of the net. Now over to Tanner Ryan. Pushes it up the wall to O'Reilly. O'Reilly crosses the blue line. He's going to take a shot from distance. That gets tipped and goes off the blocker of Bradford. 
Up to the blue line. Conley holds the line. Bouncing puck down low. Picked up now by Nickel. Nickel sends it behind the net. Picked up on the far side. They'll clear the zone by Sturgeon. No team, no team, no! National zone. Connolly tries to bounce it off. Levin does a great job of applying pressure. Back of the blue line. Girth, he can't get a shot off. He'll dish it over to Sten. Picked up behind the Nationals net. Connolly, he gets taken down. Stars try to capitalize. But great back checking by the Nationals forwards in the night. Levin again. He's going to carry out front. He takes a shot. That one just goes over the net. Jenkins keeps it in the blue line. He's going to throw it down to Sten behind the net. Sten back out front. Jenkins comes in. He takes a shot. That goes just over. Alexander now the blue line. Back down low for Sned. Tries to get it out front. He had a man sitting there, but just goes off a skate and Nationals clear the zone. Seminar. He'll bring it across the blue line. He takes a shot. Rebound chance out front. Ranger makes the save. And Nationals once again clear the zone. Stars coming in with all kinds of pressure. Sned now the blue line. Loses it in the feet of the linesman. Gets it back to Alexander. Gets it back to Sned again. Stars Carrot take the blue line, take the shot. That one just slides wide. Dobbin on the far side. He's going to try to tip it. Keep it on the, in the national zone. Card up to Bowers. Bowers get lead pass intended for Wood. Gets tipped so the Vernon can no icing. Clearing attempt gets picked off. Bowers up front to Chard. Chard can't quite get a stick on it. Kept in the blue line by McGowan. Bouncing puck. Wood tracks it well and gets a hold of it. Heads up, heads up. Wood's got a man all on top of him and Franzen. Puck gets turned over. Alexander's going to move it out. Here come the Stars with speed. Three on two across the blue line. Nickel gets it over. Can't quite do anything with it. Back on the stick of Nickel again. Stolen now on the stick of Chard. Chard will move it out of the zone up to Bowers. Bouncing puck carries it across the blue line. Franzen's going to bring it in. Onto the far side, walks in, Catrice, he takes a shot, saved by Ranger. Big open chance for the Stars, but can't capitalize. Stars starting to find their feet here in the first period. Chance after chance coming in their way, but have not been able to find a way past Joe Ranger. Back across the blue line, Catrice. Holds onto the puck. He'll dump it behind the net. Picked up by Pace Rock. He gets pressure, tries to put up the wall to Milne. Franzen keeps it in. Now on the stick of Thompson. Thompson holds up. Nice big lead pass. Here goes Milne. Milne still with the puck. Waits in, moves in. Tries to get a shot. Gets taken down by Catrice. And we'll see our first penalty of the game. Beautiful, hard-working effort by Nolan, by Milne as he will draw the game's first penalty. And we talked about it at the end of the regular season where the Nationals were doing a really good job of moving their feet. And that's what Milne does on this play. Makes a nice little offensive move right to the face-off dot to create the space to have a miniature breakaway and then gets taken down by Catrice. And now the Nationals get their first power play in this playoff. Face-off one by the Nationals. Cross sights to Weingard. Fans on the one-timer. Puck comes up to the blue line. Ludington, he'll hold the line over to Palmer. Palmer to O'Reilly. O'Reilly takes a shot. Rips it a bit too high into the netting and out of play. And again, quick puck movement by the Nationals. Getting it over to O'Reilly. And that shot, he kind of lost his balance a bit, which was why he had to quickly adjust his to elevate that puck, and it goes off of a stick and out of play. Luddington at the blue line. Gets it back to the line, gets back to Weingart, back to Luddington. Over to O'Reilly. Weingart tries to take a shot. That one hits a foot. Tipped it around the boards, picked up by O'Reilly on the far side. Back to Weingart. Back to Luddington in the middle. Luddington to O'Reilly. O'Reilly just tipped a little too far ahead of him. Sanity kicks it back to the blue line. Bow for the puck, continues, shot gets through. Kicked aside by Bradford. Ludington again, back to O'Reilly. O'Reilly streaks in, he takes a shot. Bradford with the blocker save. Puck behind the net, Milne puts it back around the wall. Back to the point to Ludington. 
Weingart, he tees it up, takes a big slap shot. That one finds a bit too high and into the netting again. And that shot there by Ludington, that hit a body. So the puck's gonna stay inside. And I like the fact that they have three guys up high with O'Reilly on the right side, Ludington here on his off side for the one-time option, and then having a guy like Isaiah Ludington in the middle of the ice to be able to create the offensive move and quarterback the power play. Just over halfway through this power play, Nationals bring out their top unit. Chard wins the faceoff. Gets to the blue line a little too much put on there by Milne. McGowan has to bring it in over the blue line. McGowan sends it down over to, San over to Sanofi. Over to Chard. Chard out front. Gets it in front of the net, but Bradford reads it well and will glove it down for the whistle. Yeah, a smart play there by McGowan to try to bring that puck down low. As we'll take a look again, down low it goes, and then just a smart play by there by Bradford. He finds that loose puck, gets his stick on it, and he's able to put the glove down, get a whistle, and get fresh penalty killers out on the ice. Face off one by the Stars. State Nationals almost capitalized, stripping Jenkins of the puck. Back out front again, takes a shot by the, by Wood, but just puts it wide. Wood again, another shot. That one goes wide again. Bowers holds it in the blue line. Milne, he gets stripped of the puck. That will go down the length of the ice. Ranger comes out to play it. 12 seconds left in the power play. McGowan overskates the puck. Going to catch up to it. Drop pass. The Nationals get up to the blue line. Bowers jumped on quickly by Alexander. He'll move it into the offensive zone. Bowers again. Picks it up. Takes it. Top shelf. Just gets blocked. And Bowers gets hit down, and he is down in the middle of the ice. French takes his man down, and now we're going to see another penalty coming here. A little bit of after whistle extracurricular is happening. Levin getting into it, Bowers. And this all started when Bowers went down in the middle of the ice. But we'll take a look at this chance once again, right out in front of the net. As they try to get that puck towards the front and they're not able to get, there's the shot there by Wood and he's not able to get the accuracy on that. And so now penalties have been assessed and it looks like French is the only man in the box. So it's going to be a power play for the St. Thomas Stars. As on that play, Bowers might have got clipped by Levin, which the Nationals thought may have been a call, and then French goes in for the retaliation, so he goes in the box, and Nolan McGowan is having a conversation with the referee just about what they decided to do, and so now St. Thomas' first power play of this game, and they want to be careful, especially with having Levin and Nickel on the top unit. Absolutely, you know the puck's going to be going to nickel stick. But the Nationals are going to try to clear the zone. Can't kept it at the blue line by Jenkins. He'll send it down onto the stick of nickel. Down low, over to Levin. Levin up top. That is off its moorings. Rangers try to call for it as the ref finally blows the whistle. And again, new nets here at the Western Fair Sports Center tonight making their playoff debuts. And yet, there's still the same result with the pegs coming off. We've seen it time in, time out. And even with a brand new net, peg's still going to come off. Face off once again to the left side, to the right side of Ranger. Stars win it cleanly. Jenkin at the blue line. Over to Nickel. Nickel, he's going to try to break in. Back to Jenkin again. Chard on the attack. Rise of pressure. Puck sent behind it to Hooban. Hooban gets it up the wall to Levin. Levin down to Hooban. Hooban back up front, takes the shot. Saved by Ranger. Levin recovers. Levin spins around the circle, trying to find some kind of opening. Back out front, she gets it to into the middle of the ice. Nashville's going to get a steal as Ludington will get it out. Over to Char. Char across the blue line. He's got one man with him. Char takes a shot right to the bread basket to Bradford. Bradford's going to move it quickly. Trying to catch the net, sleeping as here comes Levin across the blue line. He's got Huben with him. 
Gets it out front. He takes a stick right in the gut. No call. Jackson Dobbin holds the blue line. Puck comes loose. Nationals will clear. Sends it down the length of the ice. They'll get some fresh penalty killers on the ice. 30 seconds left in the power play. Sned across the blue line. He's going to dump it in the far corner. Weingart rushes in there. He's got two stars all over top of him. Battles for it with Alexander. Puck stays on the stick of the stars. Back to the blue line. Nickel. The only player to stay on the ice for the, for the stars. Down low. Sned. Back to Nickel. Back to Sned. And the gate play hold on to the puck. It's great defensive play by Thompson. Forces the puck out. And the Nationals kill off the penalty. Alexander, he's going to score across ice. Brought across the blue line now by Seminara. He'll leave it for Dobbin. Stolen by the Nationals. They're going to send it down the length of the ice. Allows him go for an icing as Sturgeon picks it up. Girth gets to the red line. He's going to dump it in. Ace Roth tries to put it up the board. Sack gets kept in by Seminar. Stolen again, this time by McGowan. Now over to Mill. Mill, red line, dumps it in. Seminar on the boards. Throws the reverse hit. But O'Reilly's going to come away with the puck. Drop now for Palmer. Another penalty coming here to the Stars. Palmer holds on. He's going to just skate back, let the Nationals get the full six skaters on the ice. Now to charge. Lucas Char, he's going to try to skate right through the middle. Gets past two, gets pinned on the boards. Palmer's going to find it in the corner. Palmer, draw pass for Char. Charge still battling for it. Now to Ryan. Ryan out front takes a backhand chance. Bradford has to make the save. And we'll see another penalty coming here to the St. Thomas Stars. And it's going to happen right along the side wall here. Because right there is the cross check. Referee right down low in the corner sees it. And so two minutes will go up on the clock as Matt Sturgeon's gonna go off. And once again, another power play here for the Nationals. Two minutes and 24 seconds left in the first period. So there'll be a full two minute power play. So 24 seconds will remain of five on five here to close out this first period. But first, a Nationals power play. Face off scrum, Nationals will come away with it. McGowan gets it over, now over to Bowers. Bowers waits, tipped out front, loose puck down low. Bradford tracks it well. He started just congregate right on top of Milne. Not like that little extra shot he gives after the whistle. Well, good shot onto the net, generates that chance out in front. Bowers tries to put it to an area and it does get deflected there by Milne. And Milne might have felt that he had seen the puck loose, which is why he takes that extra shot and St. Thomas comes in right away to make sure that he doesn't get any further chances. Face off one again by the Nationals. Bowers a little too hot on that backhand. Does clear the zone. Nationals going to have to get out and regroup. Over to Wood. Wood gets pressured by Alexander. He gets taken down hard to the ice. Will get the puck down in the corner. Blocked at the blue line by Chard. Now back over to Bowers. Bowers down low to Milne. Milne tries to get in the middle of the ice. Bowers again, tees it up, takes a slap shot. That gets blocked. That one looked like it hurt. Transit with a selfless play. Across the blue line, Bowers. Waits, nice little touch pass over to McGowan. McGowan carries it down low, puts it in the middle of the ice. Going to be a foot race for it now. Here comes Hooban. One man to beat against Bowers. Walks in, takes a shot blocker, saved by Ranger. And the puck is out of play. The captain coming up with a big opportunity. Yeah, this was a turnover from Owen McGowan, which creates this chance of shot off of Joe Ranger. He doesn't know where it goes, and it actually ends up landing over in Section H. As once again, the Nationals had a chance to get a great A scoring opportunity, and one pass too many leads to that St. Thomas shorthanded chance. Bouncing puck ends up on the stick of Weingard, but he can't handle it enough to get the puck out. Seminar applies some pressure, but the puck's over on Isaiah Ludington's stick. He's going to carry it across the blue line. Dishes to Palmer. Back to Weingart. To Ludington. Gets over O'Reilly. He takes a shot. That finds its way through traffic on net. But Bradford makes a save. 
And we say it time and time again with Sam O'Reilly. As soon as he gets the puck on his stick, he wants to shoot it. And we've seen it a couple of times already in tonight's contest. He's trying to beat Bradford on that low blocker side. And Bradford's been reading that so far. Puck gets taken by Seminara. He'll clear the zone. 29 seconds left in the power play. We are seeing another penalty being assessed here. I believe it is going to be to the Nationals. We slashing is the call. Not what the Nationals want to see here. Sam O'Reilly's heading to the box. As we'll see, 53 seconds here of uh, here in the period. And this happens four on four. right off the faceoff as O'Reilly's in a battle down low, and that's the slash right there that he calls. Right off of Nick Cuban, as clearly O'Reilly didn't like the altercation and gave him the little chop. And so now it'll be four on four to close out this first period. Big slap shot right off the faceoff win. Ranger catches it up high, but keeps it out. Great chance by Levin. Puck comes up to the red line. Bowers, he's going to try to skate his way through the middle. Stopped up. Back on the second left. 13 seconds left before Sturgeon comes back on the ice. Gert, up across the blue line to Alexander. Alexander waits, tries to throw it back. He's getting nickel in the middle of the ice. On the stick, 11. 11 gets hit in the corner. McGowan picks it up. McGowan's just going to hold it. He's just going to kill off some more clock. As they'll send it down the length of the ice. Ten seconds left here. Nationals quickly get a steal. Back out front. Thompson shoot. Just misses wide. Big opportunity at the end of the period. But we are going to head into our first intermission. Tied 0-0. A goaltending battle to start our first game of the Western Conference semifinals. We'll be right back here on the London Bruin Cup National. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Jackie, going to three. Got it. Do you think I'm incapable of completing this procedure? I didn't say that. This never had to happen. We don't have time to debate this. Cover your unit. Figure it out. I'm here for you, bro. I know. These guys are the best. That's their whole job. Give me a name. I want you to agree to something first. You don't negotiate with me. Chicago Med, Fire, and PD. All new episodes Wednesdays on City TV. Or stream on City TV Plus, the app, or CityTV.com. After a night out with your friends, not having a plan for a safe ride home can leave you in a bad spot. You could end up riding in a police car, an ambulance, or a hearse. These unplanned modes of transportation can be a costly choice and do not take you home. Your plan could include a designated driver, a taxi, or public transit. Drink responsibly, choose your ride, and have a plan for a safe ride home. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Tyler Alexander, number 27 of the St. Thomas Stars. I'm going to start with a little simple question for you, Tyler. What do these Summerlin Cup playoffs mean to you as a fifth-year veteran of the GOJHL? You know, it's huge. Um, we've been battling all year. And, uh, my last year at it, I really want to go, uh, go on a playoff run, and I feel like we got a good group here that we can, uh, that we can do it if we put things together. Yeah, of course. Now, Tyler, another question for you is, you played in the GOJHL, you played in the OJHL. What is your biggest memories from playing in those two different leagues? I think it's just the stuff away from the rink, the bus trips, you know, getting early to the game, hanging out with the boys and all that. We have a great group here and it's a lot of fun to come to the rink every day. Yeah, for sure. And my last question for you, Ty, is 
What specifically are you and the boys doing to get going for the playoffs? What superstition things are you guys doing? You know, we just have to have a good structure in the D zone. Uh, the Nats are powerful. Uh, we got to stay out of the box and, you know, just stick to the basics and good solid first passes, get out of the zone and go to work in the O zone. All right, awesome, Tyler. Now it's a commercial break. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, anything at all. He's that strong. Joe Schuster, will you stop it or you'll miss your train? Now help me find number five. Strong, but by day he's a mild mannered reporter. Glasses, you know, a secret identity. Honestly, you Canadian kids. He'd be in this cape. A what? A cape. Wearing these blue tights. A hero in tights, really. Here it is. What? Listen, Lois, this guy is faster than anything, I swear. If you're not fast, you're gonna miss your train. That's it. A bullet, a bullet. He's faster? No, he's faster than a speeding bullet. Come on, get on it. No one's gonna read a comic strip about a strong man in tights, Joe. It'll never fly. Why? No. But he can leap over tall buildings. Oh, wow, yeah. See what your cousin Frank says in Toronto. Wait, wait, Lois. I I've got something for you. Take it. It's a gift. You never know. It might be worth something someday. Is he great or what? Bye-bye, Lois. It's closing time. And you stayed out longer than you planned. So now you can't drive. And the buses have stopped running. You could always call your girlfriend. Or maybe your roommate. What about your best friend? You could just dial one triple eight taxi guy or use the taxi guy app. The call and the app are free and they both connect you to a local cab company to bring you home safely. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive alive, drive sober. All the camera operators for tonight's game are volunteers. Roger TV volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. If you're interested, visit rogerstv.com slash volunteer to sign up. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, 0-0 is your score in this pretty solid goaltending battle right now to start off our Western Conference quarterfinals uh, as the Stars putting up quite a bit of a fight here to start this game, uh, giving the Nationals all kinds of trouble. And that's what you expect here in game number one, these playoff jitters you know early on and both teams were going back and forth but speed was the big thing early on in that first period they were using their legs using that foot speed to be able to move the puck back and forth not many grade a scoring opportunities except for that very last minute chance but other than that it's been a goaltender battle joe ranger and Bradford have also been playing really well after 20 minutes. Take a look at our scoring summary here after 20 minutes of play. As we said, it's, uh, it's blank. We got no goals so far through 20 minutes of play. Nationals do lead the Stars 10 to 8 in the shot category. Uh, both teams getting a couple power play opportunities as well. Um, both still striking up zeros. We said right at the top of the show the big key matchup between these two teams is probably going to be power play. Um, they are two of the top teams in the league in power play percentages. You know they're lethal when it comes to that. you got to expect something's going to break sooner or later. Yeah, so especially if you're the St. Thomas Stars having Levin and Nickel playing on the right side on the power play, and then the Nationals having two units that can very easily put the puck in the back of the net. So both teams wanting to be careful and keep them to the outside and not allow any real rebounds in front of their net minders. Nationals get a bunch of chances throughout that first period, but uh, Bradford in net for the Stars was fantastic throughout everything that came his way. Well, again, a mid-season acquisition. Bradford came over from the Stratford Warriors, and he's come in here and played really well. Takes away a breakaway chance there by Mill. And again, a lot of shots coming from the outside. We've seen O'Reilly pepper some shots towards Bradford. And I really like that he plays more deep in his crease. Kind of reminds me of a Henrik Lundqvist, where you're playing deeper in your crease, you're, you have more time to be able to recognize, read where the puck is going to potentially go, and that's going to be a key for Bradford throughout this series as he's going to get the majority of the net in this playoff matchup. So expect Bradford to be big things for St. Thomas. Absolutely. I, I expect that we're going to see probably the same goaltending matchup throughout this entire series as well. Uh, in the other side for the Nationals, Joe Ranger gets that break off on Saturday, um, Saturday and Sunday um, and just looks phenomenal so far. Well, this is exactly what the London Nationals wanted from Joe Ranger. And they've got more than what they came for with Joe Ranger. He came in right away first game played lights out and especially here in this playoff matchup 
They brought him in to win a Sutherland Cup. So for Joe Ranger, an opportunity to win a junior hockey championship, you don't say no to those types of opportunities. Coming down here to London, he's played lights out in the regular season, looking to carry that here into the postseason. Absolutely, and you're going to have to expect he's got to keep it up in this series. Uh, we've already seen a few decent chances from Levin and from Nickel, and you know those two are going to keep peppering him all night long. And that's the key, right? If you're Ranger, you know who's on the other side. You're going to be facing him the next four, potentially seven games. So you know when they have the puck, you want to be aggressive. You want to make sure you don't allow any loose rebounds where those guys can easily put the puck in the back of the net. Other side of the ice uh, with the Nationals offense, they're getting chances, but I'm not seeing too much of those great A chances. They're not getting that home plate area as we've talked about many times throughout this regular season. Shard got that one loose, play, loose puck right at the end of the period, but that's the closest they pretty much came all, all night so far. Well, and that's exactly the case, right? When you play this postseason style of hockey, it's very tight checking, and you don't allow those inside chances. You're playing man-on-man. You're always making sure who's your responsibility out on the ice. And especially for that third line with Milne, you want to keep your eye on where is Nickel, where is Levin on the ice. You want to make sure that there's a body on those types of players and make sure that they don't get to touch the puck. Absolutely. Stars will start the second period on the power play. And we'll see if they can strike some gold here to start the second, the second period. You are watching the London Brewery Club National Hockey here on Rogers TV. Your visit isn't really necessary. I'll judge for myself. I know you're an MP, Miss McPhail, but a woman has never... I am not leaving till I do. be called civilized. If those appalling conditions don't change, that prison will explode. Perhaps our lone lady member is too fragile to know what is normal in a prison. Is this normal? Her courage would lead to the overhaul of the entire Canadian penal system. Agnes McPhail, Canada's first woman MP. After a night out with your friends, there's always options for getting home safely. You could call your BFF, your mom or dad, whoever you can count on for a safe ride home. You could call your favorite cab company or one triple eight taxi guy. Or you could use the Arrival Live smartphone app to help you choose your ride. Be it a friend, transit or taxi, getting home safely is app easy. Now available for iOS and Android devices. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive, drive sober. Play and win every Monday night at 8 p.m. with Optus TV Bingo on Rogers TV. Cards are available at multiple London locations and are good for all three games. Weekly jackpots total $3,000. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, we take a look at our Paul Duarte and Associate shot on goal after 20 minutes of play. Nationals lead shots 10 to 8 after the first 20, but still tied at 0 0. And we take a look at our next contest here at uh, Rogers TV. It'll be game three of the matchup here between the Stars and the Nationals. And it'll be Saturday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, live on Rogers TV. Which could be a very make or break game in that series. Uh, all has to come down to what happens tonight. Absolutely, in a best of seven series, it's all about who can win game one. And last year when these two teams faced off in the first round, it was indeed the St. Thomas Stars getting off on the right foot, winning game number one. And what we expected to be a series where the Nationals had the option to really win, the, win that series in four, but they ended up not. So this is important for the Nationals to have revenge on the mind this season and make sure if they want to take the St. Thomas Stars out, they need to continue to play hard for every possession. As, of, as for the Stars, though, a, a win here gives them that momentum and gives them that belief. The belief that they can actually beat the Nationals in this building. And the Nationals are one of the hardest teams to beat on home ice. They uh, had one of the better records in the in the entire Western Conference on home ice, and they look to keep that uh, going here tonight. And that's exactly what you want if you're the St. Thomas Stars, is you want to play really well 
on the road to start a postseason run. And if you can win game number one, you now all of a sudden have that home ice advantage where you can turn that around. You've got, in this series, it'll go London for game one, St. Thomas game two, back here Saturday night here on Rogers TV for game three, and then game four back in St. Thomas. So they flip-flop between the two Highbury Avenue cities, and it'll be exciting to see on Friday in game number two how these teams play down at the Joe Thornton on Friday night. But here in period number two, we'll see if we can find a potential goal scorer as the goalies have battled it out here in that first 20 minutes. Joe Ranger looked like Joe Ranger and Bradford looked like Bradford. So both teams looking very good here to start this first period. And again, the Nationals will be shorthanded a minute and seven seconds on the clock as Sam O'Reilly sits in the box for his slashing call. A very aggressive penalty kill the Nationals typically have. So expect to see more of that as we start here for their opening faceoff. Beautiful clean win by Char as the Nationals will start the period off by dumping the puck down in the offensive zone. Jenkins gets the puck over to Levin. Levin cross ice over to Nickel. Nickel, he's going to bring it up, stops up on the red line, draw out some space, gets it over to Jenkins. Jenkins will dump it in the offensive zone. McGowan will pick it up and throw it hard, but can't get by Hoobin. Back to the blue line, to Levin. Now to Jenkins. Sends it down low for Nickel. Nickel assesses the situation, tries to throw it on the short side. Puck's going to get stolen by the Nationals. They got a partial two on one coming the other way. Here come the Nationals. Over to Wagner in the middle, takes a chance. Beautiful save out front by. Bradford, but the Nationals just can't get a hold of it to capitalize on the second chance. Hoobin gets it up to the blue line, stolen by Weingart. He sends it back out in the neutral ice. Foot race for the puck, picked up by Sanavi. Sanavi tries to drop it for Chard, can't quite get it on his stick. Weingart does, though. Weingart, Chard takes the shot and scores! Lucas Chard, short hand and goal! And this all generates from a St. Thomas turnover right at the blue line. And Chard is able to carry the loose change. He gets this puck from Weingard, and all of a sudden it's a two-on-one turned into a bit of a breakaway. And for Lucas Chard, he's able to get that one five hole past Bradford and gets the first goal in this series. In the regular season matchup with the Stars, Chard had nine assists and no goal, so for him to break the ice here tonight is big for the Nationals here in game one. Nationals penalty killers coming in big as the power play expires as O'Reilly back on the ice. O'Reilly gonna rush in for the puck, Bradford has to quickly move it up over to Alexander. And he's gonna get it up to the blue line. Nationals throw right back in from Ludington. Palmer, he tries to jump on top of it. Nice little move by O'Reilly, he's gonna take the zone, takes a shot. That gets stopped up by Alexander and floats easily on to Bradford. Cool, and taking another look at the goal again. Great little play by Weingard, just finding Chard wide open. And he's able to find the weak spot in Bradford as he opens up the five hole late. And that's a big goal for the Nationals, especially shorthanded. We talked about how special teams was going to play a major factor in tonight's contest. And that is why you put Lucas Chard out on your penalty kill. Absolutely. Lucas Chard, 19 goals on the season. And exactly, like, has that ability to drive those plays and find those openings. And just a beautiful chance as the Nationals going to take another penalty here as uh, Palmer's stick just gets caught within the feet of the Stars player and will head to the box for two minutes or less for tripping. And once again, the Nationals get caught not moving their feet on that play and then they draw the penalty as it's down low here right on your screen and there's the trip. He tries to sell the fact that it was a potential dive but the stick was down regardless and so now another power play for the St. Thomas Stars. We'll see if they can knot this game back up at one here early on in period number two. Picked up by Wood. He's just going to flip it down the length of the ice. Goes right on to Bradford. Bradford almost gives it right back over to Thompson. And here comes Jenkins. Gets it to the red line. Dumps it in. Put right for the puck with Hoobin. Hoobin will tip it so that he keeps on the stick of the, of the, of the stars. Hoobin again behind the net. 
Pressured on him by McGowan. Back to the blue line, Janky, quick shot. But it gets tipped just wide. Played in the corner by Nickel. He gets pinned along the board. Stars come out with it. Levin, back to Jenkins. Levin again, now to Nickel. Stars trying to get their setup going here, get that shot from the point. Back to Nickel again, he walks in, he takes a shot, glove down, rebound, chance, Ranger makes the save, another chance. That one just goes over the net, that's gonna clear the zone. Couple grade A chances for the Stars, but can't score. Nickel, he's gonna try to break through the D, gets stopped up. Hoobin keeps it in the offensive zone. McGowan can't get a stick on it. Penalty coming here to the Stars. And it's going to be too many men on the ice for the St. Thomas Stars, so they'll have to send a player over to the box. As we'll take a look at this chance by Nickel, we know he has the shot. There's at least three golden scoring opportunities, two of them by Nickel and Joe Ranger once again. Strong, aggressive in the blue paint, and he's able to make a stop. And then once again, the St. Thomas Stars team, ever since they made the coaching change th with Joe Daniels now behind the bench for St. Thomas, they have been unbeaten when he's been behind the bench so far this year. So now the Nationals will be four on four as the conversation is still being had over at the St. Thomas bench. And we might have a goalie change here, Kyle. It looks like Slotez is going to come potentially into this game for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe a potential equipment issue with the Stars netminer, but it looks like Slotez has got his stick in his hand. He might be coming in to the game, and maybe it's be uh, I'm not exactly pretty, sure. Yeah. yeah, so Bradford is coming is coming out, and Slotez will come out. So... A interesting situation going on here. So Stars switching out their goaltender. Slow chest coming in. I think it might be a neck guard where maybe he is not wearing the neck guard that he's supposed to be wearing because I can tell Slow chest has his on, but I'm not exactly 100% sure as to why the goaltending changed. Tough situation for Slow chest to come in here. one nothing game, his team is down, and the Nationals are going to have a power play in 40 seconds. St. Thomas, bench minor, two minutes for two minutes. Okay, sent out. Got to reach a stop. Rangers going to come out to play it. That gets passed over to Pace Roth. Pace Roth, nice lead pass. Brings it over to Char. Char across the blue line. He's going to work in. He takes a shot. Slow just makes the save. Big kick save. That's going to go down the length of the ice. And it will go for icing. Take a look at Slochus's numbers as well. 11, 10, 3, and 1 on the season. 9.07 save percentage. And the switch again. And it looks like it was only for a short amount of time. Maybe something just up with his equipment uh, that could have been the issue as Bradford coming right back on the ice. Slochus comes out. Um, makes the couple saves and does the job. Makes his one save and stays perfect. As the Stars win the faceoff. Here comes Alexander. Nice lead pass. Gets it up to stop it. Gets it up now, Alexander, he's going to track it himself. Flex it behind the net. Back in the slot, Jenkins, he takes a shot, glove down by Ranger, and he'll hang on this time. And once again, the positioning on Ranger is pretty well perfect on that shot. He lets it get low, he gets the glove down there and makes the key glove save as the Nationals now on the power play as the Stars are able to try to work on their special teams. Is anytime you can put Will Nickel out under the ice, especially in a special team situation, you want to do so. So he's out trying to kill a penalty. Face off one by the Nationals, ends up going back to McGowan. They have a minute of power play, chant of power play time here. McGowan, the wine guard, wine guard, nice crisp pass cross ice over and over to the stick of Palmer, but Palmer bobbles it. Comes back to the neutral ice, stolen now by Nickel. Nickel, he's going to carry it in. Tries to make it move around. Let it circle back and give the puck to Jenkins. Jenkins waits. He's just going to take that and dump it all the way down into the national zone. Jenkins banks it around the boards. Still getting pressured on it. Walton Weingart tries to help out. Now ends up on the stick of O'Reilly. Sam O'Reilly, he's going to take a chance and he's going to carry it down the ice himself. 
Makes his move to the outside, walks in, takes a shot, that gets blocked. Ends up breaking a stick on the play, bouncing puck goes over the stick of McGowan. It'll go down the length of the ice. Five seconds left here in the power play. Stars once again doing a great job of keeping the Nationals away from generating any real offense. As Ludington comes on the ice, he gets hit into the boards by Stubchin. Lock out. Now Toronto crossed the blue line, walked in by Vennenberg. Tries to get a drop pass on the stick 11. It's stopped up, now comes up the wall again. Nationals get to the red line. Sanavi, he bobbles it. Does get back over. Levin quickly jumps on O'Reilly and forces the turtle. Levin at the blue line. Just almost pulling a splits right at the blue line. Vandenberg. As the Nationals recover the puck. McGowan over to Ludington. Ludington, long reach pass intended for Thompson. Thompson tries to get a second chance effort on the puck. The Stars will collect it and send it back to their own zone on an open wing. He gets a tip on it. That one goes down the length of the ice. No icing on the play. 14 minutes left here in the second period. 1-0, still your score in favor of the Nationals. Thanks to the shorthanded marker by Lucas Char. Bouncing puck comes in. French is going to try to jump right on top. Takes a shot. That one just goes wide. Bradford still down. Puck still loose. Puck comes out, just tries to kick it out. And that will go high and into the netting again. Star is just a bit of a panicked effort down low as Jake French almost capitalizes on it. Well, watch the bouncing puck as French is able to get inside position. He tries to beat Bradford on the blocker's side, and then the puck still ends up being loose, and the shot gets deflected up and out of play, and it'll come outside right up in front of the Nationals' bench. That was a trick little play of follow the puck into the air, and French found it, and he's able to get a lane to the net. Lead pass for Catrice, who ends up leaving it. Brought over the blue line, takes a shot from distance as Medeiros. And he gets pushed down to the ice. Thompson trying to help out. Puck goes on to the sticker con of on the sticker Connolly. He brought out now. Thompson. Nice little move. He's going to try to bring it out. Stolen off his stick by Phillips. And set back in the national zone. Picked and recovered by French. Banked off the wall. Connolly can't handle it. Phillips will collect. Phillips, cross ice pass, that one just misses this target. It goes a little too far for Lorzell. Gets it up to the blue line, Thompson gets it back. Lead pass onto the stick of Milne. Milne going backwards at the time, can't generate enough momentum. Levin now behind his own net. Nice little move to get past Milne. Lorzell brings it up to the red line, walks up to the blue line now. Drops it for Hugin. Thrown around the boards. Gets up to the blue line. Kept it by Hubin. Hubin now carries it around behind the net. Hugin can't handle it. It's on the far side by Bowers. Bowers tries to get a lead pass onto the stick of Chark. Quickly turned around. Hubin walks in. He takes a shot. Blocks the save by Ranger. Levin tries to get a quick uh, spin pass. This misses this target. The Nationals going to counterattack. Three on one. Bowers walks in. Pass. Over, over Bauer scores! Open net and Ryland Bowers makes no mistake as the Nationals take a 2 0 lead. Well, you can throw the monkey off the back of Ryland Bowers. A great three on one. The puck lands on Bowers' stick. He's able to feed it across the ice. And then it comes right back to him, and he ends up having a wide open four by six net to shoot into, he puts it in with ease, and that has to feel good for Bowers, especially on this past weekend where he had so many opportunities. In game one of a playoff series, he's able to get one and make it a two-goal lead. Absolutely snake bit as Ryan Bowers been over the last couple weeks. Uh, you, as you said there, uh, Jeremy, yeah, it's got to feel good for him. Absolutely, and now the confidence in his game will now increased and we might see a big point production now in this playoff series. And that's what the Nationals want from one of their top scorers. Played down low, Vennenberg. He's going to dish it out, picked back up now by Franzen. Up comes up, now picked up by O'Reilly. Pass out of midair by Nickel. 
Nickel up to Vandenberg. Vandenberg, nice cross, nice pass. Stars takes his own. Try to get a pass down. That goes to go off the skate. Still maintain possession by the Stars. Vandenberg's going to head, kick it up behind the net, puts it out front. Nobody there to collect it. The Nationals will bank it off the wall. Now go down the length of the ice. Banks off the back wall, and it goes for an icing. So we'll have another faceoff in the national zone with 11 minutes left here in the second period. And again, with it being postseason hockey, we're going to see both teams manage their benches here early on in game number one. With there being an off day tomorrow, and game two being on Friday, you can use your top six forwards heavily here in game number one. So expect a lot of. O'Reilly, Chard, Wood, and Bowers to be out on the ice a lot here in game one. Lead pass up for O'Reilly. He knocks it down. No high stick on the play. It was a close play. Stars will collect the puck, however. Played by Gert. Gets it up. Intended for Seminara. Just out of his reach. Pace Roth behind his own net. Long lead pass up to O'Reilly. Takes the blue line. Three on two for the National. O'Reilly waits. Now takes a shot. Just puts it wide. Pace Ross flex on the far side. Nice long breach pass back over to O'Reilly. Still maintaining possession. Another shot from distance. That one goes over the net. Pace Ross picks it up again. This time just ends up giving it away. Jackson Dobbin tries to send it out. Nice lead pass over to Snedden, but just offside as on the far side of the ice. And P Logan Pace Ross going to end up actually getting a penalty on this play as he takes an inadvertent slash. And he'll go sit for two minutes as he's not happy with it, but it's a penalty nonetheless. As it happens right down inside the blue line of the Nationals, as you can see it on your screen, he gets the puck, goes in deep. The whistle blows for the offside, and then right there, he didn't like the little hit thrown by Callum Snedden and goes right away for two minutes on the slash referee right there calling it. And so once again, St. Thomas going back to the power play once again. Jenkins with the puck. This is over to Levin. Levin walks the line. He's going to try to carry it down low. Thompson applying a lot of pressure. Levin still maintains possession. Now over to Nickel. Nickel's going to try to find a way to get through. Back to Jenkins. Nickel again. The Nationals doing a great job keeping their box intact, making sure nothing's getting through. Back up to Levin along the wall. Jenkins at the point. Back to Jenkins again. Now to Nickel. Nickel tries to get a shot, but he gets just smothered right on top of him by Weingart. Another shot. This one gets through. Rangers cracks it well. Gets it right between the legs and holds on for the whistle. And that is Joe Ranger's toughest save of the night so far as that puck came from the blue line. He had to fight to see that one. And again, a shot from the point. And he's able to fight that one off. As it trickled towards the blue paint, and he's able to get that one in between the pads and get another whistle. That's another reason why the Nationals brought in Joe Rangers, his ability to control any loose pucks. Jenkins with the puck, down to Nickel. Sends it back behind the net. Tries to put it out front, one time attempt. And Ranger makes the save, but when he kicks over, the net comes off its moorings. That's a reset again to the left side, Joe Ranger. Yeah, very strong push across there by Ranger as he recognizes that the puck was moving over to the left-hand side. As Again, there's that stretch feed and watch the push. Strong push by Ranger. And I was watching earlier on in the second period. That same left post was knocked off and the referee came over to fix it. And once again, it comes off here as we've seen it all the time here at the Western Fair where the pegs aren't exactly drilled in. They are only little mini divots right below, which is why the net can come off of its moorings quite easily. Puck gets sent down the length of the ice. Nationals get a chance to breathe and apply some pressure as Bradford bobbles the puck as Chard continues his impressive penalty killing and almost causes yet another turnover. No. Nationals dump it in. Played right behind the net. This Chard in there once again. Trying to cause as much chaos in the star zone as he can. Great. Throwing him right along the board by Sanavi. 
Puck comes up, Alexander keeps it in the zone. Throws it down low, picked up by Seminar. Dobbin puts it up the wall, Sanity makes a nice little move. He's going to carry it out, sanity has got speed. He's going to bring it down the left wing side. Walks in, nice little move, puts it in behind, behind himself. Now gets it back to Ludington. Ludington throws it to Connolly on the far side. As the Nationals kill off a power play and space rot back on the ice. Play cleared out. Nationals calling for a penalty, but aren't going to get one. Play down low. Nice pick off as the puck comes up. Sanavi again. He's got another chance. He's got Palmer with him. Sanavi across the blue line. Over to Palmer. Palmer takes a shot, but fans on it. Nationals with a quick steal by O'Reilly. O'Reilly gets hit along into the corner. Made by Lorzell. He's going to get a chance to move it out. Gets it into the feet of Seminara. And Pace Ross sends it back down into the star zone. Lorzell again. Back at the Seminar. Seminar bobbles it. Tried to get it to Nickel. Ends up turning the puck over to Pace Roth. Pace Roth up the boards. Gets it to the blue line. Dumps it in. And Orion's going to bow for it. He gets a stick on it and a skate. So ends up going the way of the Stars. Vandenberg pressured right at the blue line by Palmer. Turn back around. Now under the stick of Sam O'Reilly. O'Reilly gets, it's, it gets stripped to the puck. Turn back around now. Nickel. One man going right down the middle. Puts it out front. Beautiful diving play in the middle of the ice by Pace Roth to deny the one-timer. Puck's on Ray out in front of the net again. Ranger has to make a save. Picked up by Catrice. Now to Nickel. Nickel winds up. He fires a slap shot from distance. Fires it so hard he takes himself off his feet. Down low again. Takes a chance inside. And held on to by Ranger as the puck comes back out in the neutral zone. Patrice tries to get a cross ice pass, ends up hitting Ryan with the puck as the Nationals try to turn it back the other way. Vandenberg across the blue line. Gets stopped up, does get the puck deep. Played down again, held on to by Medeiros, back up again, takes a shot right on net. Ranger, Rangers down, play cannot. The Stars couldn't get a hold of the puck. Nationals do the right thing and will dump it down the length of the ice for the icing and let their goaltender get back to his feet. Well, we'll take a look at this defensive play by Logan Paceroff as he dives and he's able to get a piece of that puck and knock it down into the corner board. But once again, St. Thomas gets put good pressure towards the net. A scramble right out in front as Joe Ranger did not have control. And then once again, the smart play of the Nationals is ice that puck and settle everything down. Cross ice pass, that gets blocked as they had Jenkins heading right down for the one-timer on the, on the doorstep. Jenkins at the blue line. Holds on to the puck. Back to Jenkins again. Another shot on that. That gets saved by Ranger. Stubjian. will be brought behind the net. Now be brought out by Stubjian. And set down the length of the ice for another icing. So this entire national group has to stay on the ice once again. And now that pressure is going to start to go on to the Nationals. It's now the third time they have iced the puck. With that same unit out on the ice in St. Thomas, they want to take advantage of it. But once again, London's able to win another faceoff. Puck will go into the netting this time, so the Nationals will get the change that they solely needed. And you almost want to think that might have been a design play. It just try to win the draw and then maybe force it out of place that you can get a fresh group out on the ice as they've got the top line out there with Chard, Bowers, and Wood out there with Weingard and Ludington on the back end. Puck comes up to the blue line, but the Nationals can't clear. Back on the stick of Weingard. Weingard, nice puck pass right in the middle of the ice. Bowers will pick it up. Tries to throw right down low again. Chard gets him off his feet and he almost gets a shot on net. Puck gets stolen. Here comes Phillips across the blue line. He gets hit on the boards. Weingart takes the body and separates him from the puck. Here comes Gert. He'll dump it in the offensive zone. Bowers on the far side. Bows with Phillips. Tries to throw a hip. Weingart is, there, is in there for help. Weingart tries to get a lead pass onto the stick of the Nationals Wood, but can't quite connect on it. Back down the length of the ice. Here comes the Stars across the blue line. Stripped of the puck by McGowan. McGowan, nice touch pass. Gets it over to Wood. Wood tries to bring it across the blue line and does, but bobbles it. 
and quickly turned over again by the Stars. Weingard behind his own net. 4.22 left here in the second period. 2-0 is your score now in favor of the Nationals. And that puck goes into the benches and out of play. We'll have a faceoff back in the National zone, or just outside the National zone. Faceoff will be to the left of Joe Ranger. As a shot for four minutes and 18 seconds left, read 18 to 14 for the St. Thomas Stars. But that all important goal count reads 2 0 London. Play down low, French. He gets pinned along the boards. Puck comes up. Ryan, nice little move. He's going to try to get it out of the zone and will. Ryan tries to put a bit of speed on, but blows a tire. And the puck set behind the net. Lucas Carson, he's in there for support. Puck ends up bouncing high and into the netting. The Nationals will get an offensive zone faceoff here. Just under four minutes left to play. Again, we're at that point in the hockey game now where we're going back to being a back and forth type of game where the Nationals have been using a lot of their feet, but St. Thomas has done a great job responding to that as well here in game number one. Seminara, cross ice pass, Stars take the zone. Dumped in the offensive zone by Dobbin. Dobbin takes a hit. Another hit throw this time by French. Back up, comes to the top, Ranger makes the save. Stars holding on to the puck, trying to put it back out front. Gets blocked, Seminara collects it in the corner. Back of Lorzell at the blue line, he'll throw it down low. Trying to jam away at it. Snedden, now picked up again by Dobbin. Up to the blue line, Catrice, he takes a shot. Padded away there by Ranger. Another shot on net, Ranger blocker save. Puck still loose, Ludington gets a hold of it, pushes it along the wall. Kept it at the blue line by Catrice. Sned, he keeps it in the zone. Lorzell now at the blue line. He takes a shot. That hits the body out front. Nationals try to clear and will. Lorzell brings it in, but just offside as Franzen couldn't clear the line in time. Good, and once again, good puck pressure by the St. Thomas Stars there. As again, they were throwing shots onto Joe Ranger. And Joe Ranger so far in this second period hasn't exactly been able to make any real controlled saves. He's had to fight a lot of pucks off as there's been a lot of traffic in the middle of the offensive zone. Ben and Burke gets the puck stolen off him. Sanavi gets it to Thompson. Thompson across the blue line. Stolen back by Ben and Burke. Far side, Alexander tries to hit Nicholas. He's streaking down the length of the ice, but just off his stick and goes down for an icing. You can see on that play, St. Thomas Stars are trying to use that stretch pass, which we haven't really seen so far in tonight's game, is that long stretch pass where, again, with it being the first game of the playoffs, you're wanting to make sure that you're playing tight defensive hockey and making sure you're on the forecheck quick as well. Puck banked off the wall, picked up by McGowan on the far side. Now over to Weingart. Sanity at the blue line. Back to McGowan. McGowan will bring it in. He'll dump it into the offensive zone. Chases after it. Alexander gets to it first. Throws up the wall to Vandenberg. Now Thompson. Thompson throws a hit on Jenkins, but picked up by, Alex, uh, by Vandenberg as he'll bring it out. Vandenberg avoids a big hit being thrown there by Sandeby. Puck is dumped into the national zone. Ranger comes out to play it, bobbles it, but might have been for the best. And Alexander was all over top. Played on the far side. Franz. Gets a hold of the puck. Now back to Vandenberg. Now to Nickel. Nickel, big head of steam. Carries it across the blue line. Loses the puck at the feet of Weingart. Back to Jenkins. Just cross ice pass. Puts it over onto the stick of Franzen. Down low, Franzen battles for the puck. Nationals still trying to get a hold of it as well. Two Nationals, two Stars down there. Big hit throw by McGowan as he takes his man down to the ice. Milne comes away with the puck. Ends up losing it right away onto the stick of Nickel. Not the guy you want to lose a puck to. Nationals taking a second to breathe. Puck left for O'Reilly. Riley's nice little move. He's got an opening. Sam O'Reilly carries it down. He's bringing in the offensive zone. He takes a shot, catches up Bradford up high. He lost sight of the puck. 
Arson comes in to help it. He can't get a, puck on, a stick on the puck. Puck gets set down the length of the ice and will go for an icing. 47 seconds left here in the second. So to get an offensive zone draw. And then taking a look at the other out of town scoreboard. The LaSalle Vipers currently up 3 to 1 over Chatham Maroons in game one of their Western Conference quarterfinal matchup. We talked about that right before puck drop, how that LaSalle and Chatham series is going to be an O'Reilly interesting one. It takes a big shot. <laughs> the Nationals almost get a beautiful chance off the Sam O'Reilly shot right in the slot. Still maintain possession. Take the shot from a sharp angle by Carson. That one goes right off the crossbar and almost finds its way past Radford. Pace drop down low, tries to get a tip out front. Carson looking for it. Just can't get a reach on it. Lucas Carson having himself a shift. Puck comes up to Hugin. Stolen off his stick. Pace Raw or Palmer. Back down low for O'Reilly. O'Reilly collects it. Three seconds left. Tries for one more shot. Maybe no. As they get set behind the net. And that will do it for the second period. Nationals offense comes alive in the second, picking up a pair. And we will they will take a 2-0 lead into the intermission. You are watching Leonard Brewing Co. The world's most famous Canadian, Grey Owl, just back from a triumphant British tour, is to be a reluctant guest at a gathering of First Nations. Archie, you may not realize this, but right now you are the most famous Red Indian in the world. These are your people. You have to be there. Come on, Harold. Let's go. Sure, I'm sure. His name is Archie Bellini. And if he's a Red Indian, I'm the king of China. It is an honor to meet the man called Grey Owl, who has brought much respect for our people. Imposter, rascal, dreamer. <laughs> and yet the Englishman who called himself Grey Owl <laughs> awoke the whole world to our vanishing wilderness. <laughs> My brother says, men become what they dream. You have dreamed well. This is Rogers TV. The regulars, the guys who keep this place in business. Last week, they had something to celebrate. Jason had just finished university. So they toasted his profs, his TAs, his old roommates. Well, they toasted just about everyone. But I worry about and take care of my guys. So even when I know they're not driving, sometimes that means bringing them a little surprise. And then they had a drink to me. Brought to you by SmartServe Ontario and Arrive Alive, Drive Sober. Hello, I'm with Owen McGowan, number six in the London Nationals. My question for Owen is, what is the reason behind your power play success throughout this regular season? I think just moving the puck quickly, getting guys their chances, and getting pucks to the net. I can't score without getting the puck to the net, and we're just trying to get there as much as we can. Yeah, for sure. And now my other question for you is, let's speak on Sam O'Reilly, his success as a rookie in this league. What does it mean to the team? You know, he's a phenomenal player, phenomenal guy inside the room. He came here just with a chip on his shoulder. He wanted to do the best he could be. I think he's proven that all year long. You know, the points go a long way of showing that, but even coming to the rink, he's, he's a guy you want to be around. He comes to the rink every day trying to work as hard as he can. All righty, and my last question for you is, let's hear about the mullets. Like, they're looking dirty. I, I got to know, whose idea was it? It was a team's idea. Well, you know, we figured, you know, just another team bonding experience for the guys, buying for playoffs, and, you know, not everyone's doing it to look good, so figure why not. It's just another thing to battle for every game. All righty, thank you, Owen. Now back to commercial break. agreed to this last race. She's too old. Eddie! Coming in there! Guns on hell, you're back! Get to it, Matt! Here's there's some kind of difficulty. There seems to be something loose up there, and we 
race and still undefeated. The Blue Nose out of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia was fastest in the world for almost 20 years. Everybody knows not to drink and drive, but some people still think it's okay to take drugs and drive. Police have the authority, the ability, and the tools to determine if drivers are impaired by legal or illegal drugs. And because drug impaired drivers can pose just as great a risk as drunk drivers, they face the same penalties like the loss of their driver's license, a criminal record, fines, and more. A message from the RCMP, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. The Game Day London takes readers behind the scenes and beyond the box scores, offering news, analysis, long form, and interviews, all produced by local journalists. Catch the coverage at gamedaylondon.com. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Centre, 40 minutes in the books. 2-0 is your score in favour of the London Nationals. And they came in dynamic ways. Lucas Chard leading the rush. Yeah, short-handed goal right off the rush, and he's able to capitalize on that one. The Nationals once again being able to capitalize on a 5-on-5 five -five opportunity. As once again, here is Chard's look. He basically walks right in off a turnover and be able to cash in on that to make it 1-0. And then Ryland Bowers... He was snake bitten on the weekend trying to get lots of opportunities onto the net. But he finally able to bury that one. Again, with it being the playoffs, goals reset. So their first of the postseason. Weingard and Wood draw assist. And Tanner Weingard's had a really good night in here. That turnover right at the blue line, he found charge back door. And that's why the Nationals are up two to nothing. Ever since we I, uh, we talked about Weingard, he had a, he had a rough game about a couple weeks ago. Um, and we mentioned he just didn't look like his normal self. Basically, since then, he has been the Nationals' probably best defenseman. Um, he's been on a terror, like, offensively. He's doing a great job defensively, using his size to his advantage and really just trying to push people around, which when you are the biggest guy on the ice, you can do that. And that's been very evident the way he's been playing. He's been very impressive. And just with that pass down to Charter for that, that shorthanded goal, great read and just great patience getting the puck over to him. Well, right now, he's the number one defender for the London Nationals, and that really helps when a guy like Owen McGowan comes back into the lineup late in the regular season. He's still not back to being full-on Owen McGowan type of player, but having a guy like Weingart and also Isaiah Ludington, having those two offensive defensemen really offload Owen McGowan's workload here in this postseason run. Nationals do manage to put two on the board. One, yeah, left Lucas Chard wide open. The other one, Ryland Bowers has yeah, like a, a three-day trip between him and the nearest skater. Um, but uh, Bradford between the pipes has been fantastic for the Stars, doing everything the, uh, the Stars basketball. Yes, and you know, looking at Bradford's work again, he is a goaltender that really likes to play deep in his crease. And then when he has to be aggressive, He's able to make those stretch fit saves. The Nationals have thrown 17 shots onto the net. So for Bradford, he has done really well. And like you mentioned earlier, Kyle, I expect both Bradford and Joe Ranger to carry the workload here in this first round playoff series. Absolutely. He has been, he has looked good. Like the two plays that, the two goals that let him in, I can't blame him for either. Uh, just the defensive lapses end up being the cause for those plays. Now the other end of the ice, defensive lapses are not a thing that seems to be happening right now. The Nationals defense is smothering every chance the Stars get. Uh, Nickel and Levin haven't had any real great good chances coming down low. And when they do get a shot through, Joe Ranger's been standing up to the task. Well, once again, Joe Ranger being able to come into London at the midway point of the trade deadline in the Junior B level and being able to make consistent save after consistent save after consistent save. And that's what the Nationals brought him in for, to be able to go deep into a playoff run and try to win another Sutherland Cup. So for Joe Ranger, this is now go time for him to make sure he can be the very best goaltender that I can, he can be. And so far through 40 minutes here in this game one, He's looked fantastic. Absolutely. He's done everything that he, the uh, Nationals have asked him. 
and more. He, he really stands up to every task that's been presented in front of him. Uh, we mentioned at the top of the show when looking at his numbers, uh, it, they don't look impressive. They don't look, they don't jump out at you. Um, he was under 500 for the first uh, seven games of his Nationals career uh, as he just couldn't get the scoring help. Um, his first game of, the, of, the national, of his Nationals career against the Leamington Flyers um, puts up an amazing performance, loses one nothing in overtime. Uh, he came in, he's done everything uh, the Nationals want, and if this is the kind of performance that they, he's going to present here in the playoffs, this means fantastic things, and the Stars going to be in trouble, and so does every other team going forward. Yeah, and if you're the rest of the league, if Joe Ranger can go on a type of run that he did when he was in the Ontario League, making a good postseason run for both the Mississauga Steelheads and the Sudbury Wolves, that's going to be key here at the Junior B level. If he can carry this Nationals team on his back, and try to ride it into the Sutherland Cup. Other thing that helps out the Nationals a lot is I believe, like, we talked about how the Stars' penalty kill is really solid and does or power play is really solid and gets a lot of chances, but the Nationals' penalty kill, it, it's, it doesn't matter, it seems, which coach is, is behind the bench of the Nationals. They just put out the most aggressive penalty kill I see any team run, and it seems to work time and time again, and uh, right now it is being driven and run by a combination of Braden Sanity and Lucas Chart. Yeah, I mean, when Pat Powers was behind the bench here for the Nationals, you could throw anyone out there, and that penalty kill looked explosive. And the same can be said with Dave Matzos now behind the bench, with Chard, with Santa We've seen Ryland Bowers also play some penalty kill time as well. And anytime they have the puck on their stick, especially on the PK, they are extremely dangerous. And they've put the puck in the back of the net. Chard put one in the back of the net here tonight. Basically a breakaway shorthanded. The lone sitting Thomas Starter defender took out the other player right out in front, leaving Chard all alone, and he's gonna bury those every single time. Lucas Chard once again tied for league lead in shorthanded goals throughout their regular season, so he only scored 19 on the season. Nine of those are shorthanded goals. Makes him one of the most dangerous players on the ice on the penalty kill. And with that, we'll be right back with our third period of action here on the London Bruin Club Nationals Hockey. Behold Emily Carr, painter, about to encounter the force that will consume her life. How tightly they sealed their secrets from me, humble and pleading before the great trees, awaiting the invitation from the spirit to come meet me halfway. Nothing is still now, everything is alive. At last, I knew I must see through the eye of the totem itself. The mythic eye of the forest. Seldom able to live by her brush, before she died in 1945, Emily Carr was in the first rank of Canadian painters. This is my country. What I want to express is here and I love it. Amen. I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning. We all know it takes a team effort in any sport and with any challenge. You can be a part of the winning team that shuts out impaired driving. Whether you're out on the town or just hanging out with friends, drink responsibly. Always have a plan for a safe ride home for yourself, your family, and your friends. You'll be helping to shut out impaired driving. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. Did you know all the camera operators for tonight's game are volunteers? Rogers TV volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. If you're interested, visit rogerstv.com slash volunteer to sign up. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, we take a look at our Paul Duarte and Associates shots on goal after 40 minutes of play. Stars come out with the positive in the shot category in the second period, but the Nationals do score two goals on those seven shots they take, leading to our totals of 21 to 17 in favor of the Stars. Taking a look at our next contest here on Rogers TV, it will be live at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, and it could be a make or break game for whoever comes away with the win tonight. And as we get set for our third period of action, it is brought to you, as always, by Calden's Clothiers. Nationals getting set here. Joe Ranger getting in the zone, as he typically does at the beginning of every period. 
So Nationals going to rely on him heavily to just lock it down, shut the door, and just let the team and defense do the rest. And that's all you ask for for a goaltender heading into the postseason is stop the puck, prevent it going into the back of the net, and let the team in front of you try to do all the work and put the puck in the back of the net. And that's exactly what the Nationals have done. And that's something that the State Thomas Stars are going to need to do, especially if your guys like Nickel and Levin. And there's on your screen the one goal scorer for the Nationals so far in Lucas Chard getting that shorthanded marker. And Ryland Bowers also as well getting on the board. So now St. Thomas in crunch time now in this final 20 minutes. Only down by two, lots of time. You're the Nationals, you want to try to have as much possession as possible and keep it down in the St. Thomas zone. Stars going to have to make a couple adjustments here. They got to get something going. Down two as we start the third here. You have action. Look out. He'll carry it across the red line. He'll dump it in the offensive zone to start the period. Down in the corner, Bowers can't get a stick on it. Quickly turned around, Alexander throws a cross ice. Intended to hit Levin, but ends up going right on the stick of McGowan. He bobbles the pass, recovers the puck, however, and will try to break it out of the zone. Sent back down low by Hubin. Now on the stick of Weingard. Weingard banks it up to Bowers. Kept in by the Stars, takes a shot from distance, and gloved down by Ranger. Well, good early pressure by the St. Thomas Stars. They're able just to throw a shot on to Joe Ranger. He's Easily able to collect that one as it'll be a face-off going to his left. And again, shots read 22-17 for St. Thomas. So they are out shooting this national team, but again, it all matters in that goal count with London leading 2-0 here in game number one. Stan O'Reilly, he's gonna carry it behind. Nice little move to get past Hoobin as he's gonna have a long lead pass over to Palmer. Callum Palmer across the blue line. He's gonna bring it down low. Bow for the puck, gets it back to Mill. Mill over to O'Reilly, but O'Reilly can't handle it enough to get a shot off. Hoobin lead pass, tipped by McGowan, out of play and into the penalty box. The faceoff's gonna happen just to the inside portion in the neutral zone, as it's gonna be right to the right hand side of our broadcast spot as Palmer is going to take the draw and lose it against Snet. Snet a clean win as the Stars will take the zone. Dump it in, picked up by Dobbin on the near side. Back behind the net for Snedden. That gets stolen quickly. Nashville's going to try to break out. Puck ends up just getting stuck on the ice. A little too wet in the corner from the Zamboni. Stopped again. A little too much water left behind after the Zamboni. Stopping the play a little bit as the puck goes into the glove. So well, before the game, we talked to a very good friend of the show and Kyle Friel, and we were talking about how the ice surface here at the Western Fair, especially after a flood, there can be ruts in the ice from multiple different games. When there's tournaments in here, the ice is used quite a lot. And so early on in games, you can see when the puck's sliding around the ice, it can sometimes spot stop in some spots where the water has not quite dried up yet. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Collected behind the net by, Con by Connolly. Nice little move as he's going to move the puck up the board to Ryan. He'll tip it, but just not enough for the wave off the ice. Come all the way back down in the national zone. Stars bring out some fresh skaters. Stars get a couple chances early, but not too much to really talk uh, to write home about. Face off to the left of Joe Ranger. Gets scrubbed, comes away with uh, the Nationals. French, nice lead pass up to Carson. Carson bobbles it, turn around quickly. Brought across the blue line now, down low by Lorzell. Hit right into the boards behind the net of Sned. Sned comes away with the puck, he'll throw it in the middle of the ice. Nobody there. Picked up by Carson, nice drop pass over onto the stick of French. French breaks his way through, moves out front, beautiful chance, and French is going to draw a penalty. French trying to point the center ice, he wants the penalty shot. Ref's not going to give it to him, but the Nationals will get a two-minute power play here. Beautiful chance by Jaden French. And that all started with that nice little draw pass that you mentioned by Lucas Carson. He's, he's able to get it into the coverage, and Jaden French once again uses his legs to generate that scoring chance. 
And so now another penalty for the St. Thomas Stars. As going into the box is Braden Catrice. He had a penalty earlier on in tonight's contest. And let's see if the Nationals can make him pay. McGowan sends it down low. Nice cross ice to Bowers. Bowers puts it out front. Tip play. Loose puck down low. And, and nice save again by Bradford. Stars tries to dive to keep it in the zone. Just out of his reach. All the way down. McGowan will pick it up. Oh, McGowan. Lead pass up the right wing side. Across the blue line is Mill. Mill puts it on, or Chard puts it on net. Bowers now. He'll hold on to the puck. Cross site to Chard at the blue line. Chard waits. Airs it down to the circle. Back to the blue line for McGowan. Over to Bowers. Bowers tees it up. Big slap shot. That one just goes wide off a skate. McGowan again. Throws it down low to Wood. Wood back to Chard. He's got Mill in front of the net. Gets it up to Bowers. Beautiful tip. As that was read perfectly by Jackson Dobbin. He goes off for a change quickly. Nationals starting to bring out their second unit. Gets up to the blue line. Kept in by, by O'Reilly. Now to Sanofi. Back to McGowan. Down low to Sanofi. Up to the blue line again. Nationals trying to find an opening in the middle here. Bauer, Bowers tries to put it out front. Still maintains possession. Tries to go for a Michigan. Ends up bouncing off his stick. Back up to the blue line again. McGowan. Cross ice to O'Reilly. O'Reilly bobbles it. He's going to have to quickly try to jump on it to recover. Sten all over top of him. Going to force the puck out. McGowan. Floats it up to Sandy. Bounced over his stick. Palmer can't get a hold of it. And the, st the Stars defender blows a tire. Palmer picks it up and keeps the puck for the Nationals. Ludington from the blue line. Tipped out front. That one just flies wide. Four seconds left in the power play. Weingart. Fans on the pass. Now gets it to his target. Sandy behind the net. Tries to get it tipped out front. Weingart again. Loose puck. Tips the shot on net. Stayed by Bradford. Held on to, walks in, takes a shot from the sharp angle. So Bradford again puts it into the corner. Right along the board, big hit thrown by the Nationals. Puck comes out to the neutral ice, now dumped in. Joe Ranger just tips it into the corner off his glove. Ludington tries to put it up with the wall. He gets stopped up, now onto the stick of nickel. Branson. Back to the blue line, Nationals collected again. French, he's going to try to work past his man and does. Jaden French, he's going to get taken down in the play. Looking for another call, Ludington comes in. Ludington takes a big hit right behind the net. The Stars bench going wild off that one. Shot from the blue line by O'Reilly. That finds his way through on a second chance effort. Comes out, Levin. Gets a hold of the puck, moves it out. Now to Nickel. Nichols got speed. He's going to try to break right through the middle. Tries to go through the D. Stopped up by Ludington and sent the other way. Just out of the reach of Duarte. Sent back the other way over the blue line. Here comes Kubin. Kubin, drop pass for Nickel. Nickel into the middle again. On the stick of Alexander. Back to Nickel again. Nickel backhand out front. Loose puck. Tries to get through and scores! Hooven gets the stars on the board. We'll follow the bouncing puck and it ends up onto the stick of Hooven and he's able to bury that one, just able to put it up and over the glove. This puck works its way down low and it sits right there and Ranger tries to get a diving glove save. But once again, Hooven able to get there first. The captain of the St. Thomas Stars coming up big for his squad. And he now got a one goal game here. Just 14 minutes ago, still lots of time for St. Thomas. And here come the Stars again. They're going to try to bring it out across the blue line. Stopped up by Snag. Gets it up, still keeping the blue line this time by Jenkins. He's going to throw it down low. Stars bring it in. Stopped up by Chard. Bauer's going to flip it out to the neutralize. Wood picks it up. Good shot by Alexander. Wood, nice little move. Carries it out front. Loose puck. Shoots. And the net comes off. It's Maury just as Bowers buries it. They're going to wave it off. Chard arguing his case. 
guys, a nice little move here by Woods. He goes inside out and he comes back up across and then right there, Bradford knocks the net off by pushing back against the grain. And a face-off will happen to the left-hand side. Char getting aggressive on the puck. Medeiros can't get a hold of it. Char Wood down there. He's battling for the puck. Gets over to Char. Bounced off his stick. Here comes Dobbin. Jackson Dobbin across the blue line. Great play by Connolly, but ends up back on the stick of Dobbin. Behind the net. Banks it off the wall. Picked up by Connolly. Connolly tries to move it out. That ends up hitting a stick. Ludington's going to put it behind the net again. Now Ludington, nice little move. Keeps the puck on, the sti on his stick. Up to the blue line, dumped in. Char will collect it behind the net. Ends up getting tripped up. Turned around now by the Stars. Job. Cross ice pass. Bringing it across the blue line to the Stars. They bring it down low. Trying to get a hold of it still. The Seminara, but it's. Now for the puck continues. Nationals finally find it and will bring it out. Duarte. Cross center ice. Gets it poked off his stick. Turned around again by Seminara. Right into the middle. Here comes Franzen. Franzen takes a shot, just misses wide. Walking up, taking a dump, takes the dump right down to the far corner. Kept in by Duarte. Now turned around again. Across the blue line, here comes Nichols. Nichols stalls, cross ice pass, walks in, takes a shot, bounces it off the back wall. Loose puck down low, trying to get it back out front. Unable to get the pass to go. Ray up the wall, Vandenberg, he'll throw it down in the corner again. Picked up by Snet by Francis. Now to Nickel. Nickel's got speed. He's going to circle around. Cross ice pass. Shot from distance. Finds its way onto target. Picked the side by Ranger. Back to the blue line again. Another shot on net. This guy gets blocked by Thompson. Thompson brings it out. He gets toppled down to the ice, but does get it into the star zone. And we got a bit of a fight starting right in front of the net here. As Sandeby just dragging Duarte right onto the bench. It looks like we were starting to see a couple of guys drop the gloves, but the both, both teams end up dragging their own player back on the bench. As Duarte will be getting the gate. And so now a conversation will be had between the officials on that play right in front of the benches. Senevi did a good job to try to contain Duarte on that play to not have any more pushing and shoving happen right out in front. Now the two captains will gather right out in front to see what will be called in that situation. I imagine the faceoff is going to come down inside London's territory, and it looks like that is indeed going to be the case. See, so two minutes will go up. Here. And Duarte drops his gloves, but nothing ends up happening on that play, so he's going to go off for roughing, and that's all there will be. So now a big power play here at the midway point in this game for the St. Thomas Stars to try to tie this game back up. Face off now to the right-hand side of Joe Ranger. Power play again, walks in, big chance by Levin. That gets blocked. By Ryan, down low again. Nashville still trying to get a hold of the puck. Picked up now by Nickel. Nickel, nice backhand pass. Gets it to the blue line off to Jenkins. Back down to Nickel. Pass. Back goes off a skate. Nashville's both clear of the zone. Good race for the puck. Jenkins going to have to move it fast. He has charged right on top of him. Ends up dropping it behind him. Nickel's on top of it. Levin throws a pick. Keeps Char away from the puck. Nickel across the blue line. Nice aggressive stick work by Ryan. Back up to the blue line. Kept in by Jenkins. Another beautiful bit of stick work there by Char. Levin back over to Jenkins. 
Now to Nickel. Low pass right to the middle. Levin goes down, and we will see another penalty coming here to the Nationals. This will be a slash is the call. So a minute, two seconds of five on three. Tanner Ryan heads to the box. Yeah, Ryan just trying to get the puck here. He takes the swing for it and then ends up taking down Levin right at the blue line. So five on three for the St. Thomas Stars. And the national penalty kill will have to come up big here on this special team's advantage for a full minute and change. Puck goes out, just catch the netting. Goes out of play. And a bit of a break on that play as it went off of the St. Thomas Stars, so the faceoff will come outside. Not too bad of a way to start the uh, penalty kill. Puck over to Nick. Nick will lead the Stars into the offensive zone. There's a down low. Thompson out there alongside Chard. Alongside Sanavi. And McGowan on the back end. Walks in, Levin, big one, cover scores! Huge goal, Michael Levin! As the Stars tie it up at two. And still have a minute 35 of power play. Well, once again, they do a good job of moving the puck around, and when you give Michael Levin that much time and space, he's gonna find a home for that puck and he beats Joe Ranger five hole and this game is now tied at two and St. Thomas still has like you mentioned Kyle another minute and 35 seconds of power play time to try to get a lead you had to figure it was going to come off the stick 11 at some point tonight he's had chances but just could not find the back of the net and capitalizes ah! at the perfect time to get the stars back in this contest Pucks back out front, bounces into the neutral zone. Sten will pick it up. Drop pass. Stars bring it across the blue line. Ludington, he's going to be right on top of it. He'll just flip it back into the neutral zone again. Eugen will pick it up. Gets it over to Girth. Girth across the blue line. Stopped up. Far side, Seminaro picks it up. He'll try to send it to the blue, up to the blue line. Mill, nice tip play, gets it to the blue line, but can't clear the zone. Nationals now get it right back and clear it. Send it all the way down the ice to Bradford. No! Stead across the blue line. Drop pass, walks in. Alexander takes a shot. Big glove save. Windmill Wednesday, Joe Ranger. Well, Joe Ranger takes his turn to enter the highlight reel as a beautiful setup by the St. Thomas Stars. And there's the beaver tap by Alexander. And Joe Ranger says, I don't think so. And you forgot that it was Windmill Wednesday. I, he, and Joe Ranger had yet to make that type of a save in tonight's contest. And what a better time to do it as we are past the midway point in the third period. The shot's starting to even up a bit here as it's now 26 to 23 in favor of the St. Thomas Stars as they still got 27 seconds of power play time and they have the big dogs out on the ice with Levin on the point once again. He's off the left hand side of Ranger. Start in the face off dot and will win it. A great jump by the Stars, get the puck back. Move, leaves it for Gert. Back up to the wall, French can't click, clear the zone, Levin gets it down low again. Back out front, tries to put it on net. Beautiful read by Ranger and he'll just gobble it up and get the whistle. Uh, we'll take a look at this Levin goal again. I isolated as he's able to play a little bit of pitch and catch here on this as he sees it and there's the one timer and he beats Ranger five hole. He saw the space and with a guy like Levin or Nicola, if they see the space before they get the puck, it's that quick release to that spot where they see the opening, and it's in the back of the net. Absolutely right there, Jeremy. Nashville's going to try to clear this on Levin again. Had a chance, but didn't like his shot option. Takes the shot regardless, that one just flies wide. Kept in the blue line by Girk. Back to five-on-five five action. Tanner Ryan back on the ice. 
Gets the puck up to Wood. Wood just flexes it off the board, puts it in the offensive zone. Alexander back to Girk. Now to McGowan. McGowan lead pass across the blue line for Chard. Chard, he's going to carry it down the middle, tries to get a shot on net, ends up getting taken down to the ice. Walking up the left wing side. Now the Stars. Cross ice pass now, picked up by McGowan. McGowan will try to bring it out. Lead pass for Bowers, he'll just deflect it in the, off in the offensive zone, chase after it. Jenkins puts up the wall, stolen by O'Reilly. O'Reilly tries to hit Palmer right in the middle of the ice. But good defensive stick work by Jenkins. Bowers, now to O'Reilly. O'Reilly takes a shot, gloved down by Bradford. Great read, and denies the chance. Oh, a good quick shot on the net. There by Sam O'Reilly. As Bradford had to be sharp on that one, a bit of a Odd shot from O'Reilly, not exactly square to the net, but he is able to get enough on that to make Bradford have to make a save. Puck set down the the ice, and we will go for another icing. Shots 26-24 in favor of the Stars, so they've been pretty even throughout this third period. But the Stars got the shots where they count to get two goals in this period to tie the game. And now London puts out their checking line with Palmer and Milne and O'Reilly. The Stars will try to throw it behind the net. Jenkins gets a hold of it, tipped out, and that will go down the length of the ice once again for another icing. The Stars will have to regroup in their own zone once again. 7.07 remaining here in the third period. Tie game 2-2, thanks to the tie goal by Michael Levin. Penalties for the Nationals turned into being their downfall here in this game so far. And they recover. Back up the wall, Franzen. He's going to tip it in. That one, no icing on the play. Picked up by Milne. Milne tries to send it out, ends up putting it right on the stick of Vandenberg. Bouncing puck back out. Pace Roth can't get a stick on it. Or Palmer can't. Back down low, walking in as the runner star takes the shot. That one just missed wide off the stick of Lorzell. Good work, good work. Bouncing puck again. Still can't get a hold of it. Nickel tries to reach for it. Can't. Lorzell gets a hold of it. Now Palmer. Palmer across the blue line. He walks in, takes the shot, catches Bradford up high. And he managed to keep the arms closed and covered up for the whistle. And we've talked about Talon Palmer's play as of late. And he's able to get this pass right at the center ice area. You can see there's the feed, and he's able to walk right in get past two defenders. And again, Bradford out aggressive in his crease, taking away any real opening from Talon Palmer, as Palmer has certainly been a threat here down the stretch. Turn around, catch it at the blue line. McGowan touched it down low, tipped out front. That one just slides wide. Star has been dominating the majority of the play for the last about 15 minutes or so, going back to the last period. Madero springs it in, drop for Phil. Phil takes the shot, Ranger with the save, rebound chance. Ends up going into the corner. Another shot on net, that gets tipped. Back to the blue line, still kept in. Stars applying a lot of pressure. Cross ice to Girth. Girth winds up, he takes a shot. That one just flies over the net. Duarte gets a hold of it. He's going to try to get out of the zone. He gets his pocket picked. Weingart battles for the puck down low with Medeiros. Trying to get some help from Thompson. Medeiros comes away with a shot on net again by Stubgeon. Loose puck again, Stubgeon again, rebound chance, takes the shot, just puts it wide of the net. Medeiros again, battles for the puck, still can't get it out of the Nationals. They get it to the logo, not enough for them to get a change. Nationals dump it in, Stars going off for a change. McGowan gets it up to the blue line, can't cross the line though. Kept in again by the Stars. Nationals manage to get one out, and they will take a penalty as the overzealous play on the Nationals bench will give them a too many men minor. And Sanovi was not quite off the ice as of yet. And once again, confusion right at the London bench. As the Nationals are in the midst of completing a change, Weingart just throws it up. 
And then Sanavi, he looks like to be going off, but he ends up touching the puck. And just frustration from the London bench is yet another penalty going to the Nationals and another power play here for the St. Thomas Stars to see if they can take a lead late here in period number three. We mentioned this at the start of the show, Jeremy. The Nationals are the most penalized team in the Western Conference, and the Stars have a very dangerous power play. This is how the Stars are going to win these games. The Nationals take too many penalties. Brought back out. Here comes Nickel, leading the rush. Carries it across the blue line. Nickel down low, beautiful play by Ludington as he goes toppling into the puck. Bounces off the wall, Levin can't keep it in the zone. Picked up by Jenkin. Jenkin up to Hubin. Brought across the blue line, down low by Sned. Back on the stick of Hubin. He gets taken down behind the national net. Char trying to get a hold of it. Ludington will. Ludington holds it, waits. Fires, tries to get a home run pass as he had Milne going right down the middle. As Levin and Jenkins both just collide together to sandwich the puck. And make sure that pass doesn't happen. Nickel keeps it at the blue line. Back over to Jenkins. Nickel again. Jenkins, he walks in. Down low goes the puck. Pinned right along the boards is Dobbin. Ludington trying to get it back over to charge. Stars are going to come away with the puck. Set back down in the corner. One of Stars players, I believe it's Hoobin, goes down hard against the boards. Nashville's going to try to get it out. Poke check at it. Now gets set down the length of the ice. Big slap shot will clear the zone by Milne as the Nationals get a change. Levin quickly across the blue line, trying to bring it in. Puts it right between the legs of McGowan. Sends it back up. Seminar takes a shot. Another beautiful glove save by Ranger. Flash in the leather. 3 3 remaining here in the third. Yeah, and again, St. Thomas has a good job of moving the puck around. And another tough save for Joe Ranger. He had to fight to see that puck, and he's able to get the glove on it. Down low again, loose puck, Ranger. Just tracks it well enough. Stars get close once again as the penalty does expire. And right off the draw, the spin shot off the boards. And once again, Joe Ranger coming up big as Snedden was right on the doorstep trying to deflect that one back across the grade into the back of the net. But once again, Ranger denies the St. Thomas Stars. Face off one by the Stars. Alexander just drives down into the corner with the puck. Picked up now by McGowan. McGowan tries to bring it out. He has three stars all over top of him. Does get the puck out, huh? Mill across the blue line. Stretch of the puck by Alexander. McGowan tries to get it. Two on one now for the stars. Over and instead for Sned. Bouncing puck down low. Still can't find it. Nationals will collect it. Send it the other way. Just out of the reach of O'Reilly. He's going to catch up to it. Brings it down low. Takes the shot. Goes off the block. All the pad of Bradford. Great save by Bradford, chances at both ends. McGowan up to Palmer. Palmer just going to try to split the D himself. Gets stopped up quickly. Back to Girth. Girth along the board. Gets it over to Lorzell. Lor it's stolen by the Nationals. Wood over to O'Reilly. O'Reilly tees it up. Big save by Bradford. Two minutes left in the game, and O'Reilly gets a great chance right in the slot. Yeah, Riley Wood coming down, streaking the right-hand side. And Samuel Riley calls for it, and he gets that good shot off. And once again, Bradford able to come up big once again. As now it's crunch time for both teams trying to fight to try to get a goal and win game one. At this point, we are basically in next goal wins territory. As Char gets a hold of it down low. Lucas Char, he's going to carry it behind the net. Tries to move it out front, just out of reach of his intended pass. Pace Roth keeps it at the blue line. Puck set cross ice. Stubbs it. He'll follow it. Puts it right along the net, uh, right along behind the net. Tipped out front. Puck picked up now by the Rockets or by the Stars. They're going to bring it out. Franzen, he can't, he's just going to leave it. Down in the corner. Pace Roth sends it around to the far side. Still kept in. Nickel, down low behind the net. 
Vandenberg, he can't get a hold of it still. Then to the far side, Franzen picks it up. Nationals will try to clear the zone. And it looks like it hits somebody on the Nationals bench. So we will have a face-off, I believe, just outside of the Nationals zone. Face-off's actually going to come inside as the Nationals put it onto their bench themselves. And so with a minute to go here in this third period, if the score is still tied, we will go into overtime, and unlike in the regular season where it's Last three on three, we will go five on five for a full 20 minutes here in the playoffs. And the puck comes all the way down. Alexander with the puck. Almost gets stripped of it by Milne. And that puck will end up going for an icing. So it comes all the way back down into the Stars' territory. Last minute of play here in the period. Now, like you mentioned, Kyle, in Mexico wins territory, every faceoff in either offensive zone is going to be important. Faceoff gets scrummed. Nationals try to jump on it. Alexander will get a piece of it. He'll send it around behind the net to Gert. Gets it up. Tries to get it out of the zone. And does. Quickly turned by, by, by O'Reilly. Down to Palmer. Palmer waits. Dish it, try to get it back on the stick of Sam O'Reilly. Bouncing pucks, still trying to get a hold of it. Pressure down low by Alexander. Puts the puck out front, walks in. Conley takes a shot, now and tips right over the net. Still stays in play. O'Reilly takes another shot, and he spins, puts it on net. Catch the body out front before it goes on net. And Bradford holds on and makes the save. Yeah, another big save by Bradford as O'Reilly Got that puck from behind the net, basically with a spin fire shot, and that almost beat Bradford Feifel. But he's able to close the legs, and with 11.3, the top line for the Nationals are out here. And again, in a desperate situation, trying to win the faceoff to try to win this game in regulation. Faceoff quickly put right on net, and Bradford will gobble it up. 9.8 seconds left here, shots 29-29 now. Draw to dead even here. Face off one by the Nationals, but can't get onto the stick of anybody. And the puck will be thrown around the board. Walks in. McGowan's got a chance on his stick and loses the puck as time expires. As the Nationals threaten with one more chance, but a fantastic comeback from a couple power play markers gets the Stars right back in this contest. We will be heading into overtime here on the London Brewing Co-op Nationals Hockey here on Rogers TV. It's packed to the rafters in the Edmonton Arena. Everyone is feeling the pressure on the grabs as they await the American champs. Here's the Cleveland favorite Knits now, and boy, do they look impressive. Look at their uniforms. I bet you could sure run in smart shirts like those. Not that. Look, world champs in my eye. Grads, we don't play for glory. We play the game for the game's sake. So tonight, you're going to earn that title by playing your game. Teamwork, passing. Let's show them what it means to play the grads. champions for 25 years. The record of 502 wins and only 20 losses is unmatched in all of sport. Summer days, summer nights, lots of things to do, places to go and people to see. If you're having a few drinks, be sure to plan ahead and get home safely. We don't want to pick you up. Drinking drivers risk injuries to themselves and others and take chances with their license, their jobs and their future. Remember what's at stake and choose your ride, whether you're the driver, the passenger, or the party host. Thanks for supporting Sober Driving. I hope we never meet. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Did you know all the camera operators for tonight's game are volunteers? Rogers TV volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. If you're interested, visit rogerstv.com volunteer.
back here at the Western Fair Sports Center. 2-2 is our score as we get ready for overtime here in game one of the Western Conference quarterfinals. Uh, what a fantastic turnaround here for the St. Thomas Stars as they basically ran London's show the entire third period. And it ended up being special teams that ended up costing the Nationals their late in period number three. And we mentioned how we you didn't want to allow guys like Nickel and Levin to be able to put the puck in the back of the net. And that's exactly what Michael Levin does. On that five on three, gets that one timer able to beat Joe Ranger. And now we're gonna have a full 20 minute overtime period to figure out who's gonna win game number one. Couple ill-timed penalties there by Duarte and by Tanner Ryan ends up costing the Nationals as the Stars tied up here. We take a look at what we did see in this third in this third period of action as the Stars offense just comes to life and gives them a chance. Yeah, good opportunity right off the hop. We talked about the special teams. The puck worked its way down low. And then right on the doorstep, the captain Huben's able to get that one past the stretching glove of Joe Ranger. And then the St. Thomas Stars have life, and like we mentioned. Levin right at the top of the circle in the Ovechkin style area where if you can get that one timer off, you're able to do that. So Nickel gets an assist on the Huben goal. Alexander with an assist, Vandenberg with an assist as well. And again, the shots 12 to 18 in favor of the Nationals. But again, in that goal count, it's now 2-2 as we're heading in here to the overtime. Absolutely, and uh, Levin, as we mentioned, are already 42 goals in the regular season. Not too surprised that tying goal coming off his stick. And uh, Nickel picking up the assist on that Hooven goal as well. Nickel 10 points throughout the six games that the two teams played uh, throughout this regular season. Nationals did come away with victories in all six of those contests. The last couple were a little close as the Stars have put up a big fight against the Nationals here. Uh, most, most in part to their big, their big three that they have in um, having Hooven there alongside Nickel and Levin. Yeah, and ever since they made the coaching change late at the end of the regular season they are unbeaten they went and beat the Leamington Flyers twice six to one so certainly a team heading into the playoffs that feel that they can maybe provide the upset here against this national squad who were trying to fight for the number one seed right until the very last game and weren't able to cash in so nonetheless London has some work to do to make sure they can put away the St. Thomas Stars. Bradford between the pipes for the for the St. Thomas Stars was the key point, a key factor in this period. Really kept them in this game and gave them a chance to win. Yeah, lots of great a chances in the third period by the Nationals. And once again, Bradford being aggressive in his crease, taking away any real goal and scoring opportunities. But other than that, Bradford's been the main reason why this game is tied up. And we will see Bradford and Joe Ranger pretty much playing every single game in this series. So looking forward to an exciting matchup here tonight in overtime. Absolutely, and he, he just he save after save of uh, what he made there. That last play that you just saw, the, uh, it was the closest the Nationals got. And Puck ended up, net ended up coming off its mooring just as Riley Bauer buries it in the net. But otherwise, every chance the Nationals had, um, he's been standing up and standing tall in the in every chance the uh, Bradford's been fantastic. Um, on the other end of the ice, um, it's, been a, it's been a solid period for Ranger, uh, but he managed to, the Stars managed to get the two through him. Um, the second run, he probably wants that, that goal back by Levin as it just managed to squeak through his legs. Yeah, for sure, and for Joe Ranger, he's gonna wanna fight back here in this overtime touchdown. As again, his first goal, you can't really blame him for the pucks bouncing around and the fine in the back of the net. To take a look at some of his work in here tonight. He's been very sharp. He has allowed a couple of rebounds right out in front, but other than that, he has been very good. You see that save there, his best of the night being the windmill Wednesday. And he's had to fight for a lot of these shots as there's been a lot of traffic in front. The Stars are doing a good job of generating traffic, but once again, Joe Ranger coming up big with those types of saves. What the Nationals are just asking for them. They just want him to battle. And that's going to be the biggest factor in this in this contest is which goalie is going to battle the hardest to come away with the win here tonight. As we are in, as we said earlier, one goal. That's all you need now. You find one way to get past one of these two great goaltenders. That's it. You get that one nothing series win. And that's what both teams are looking to do here as we get set for our overtime period. We'll be right back here on the Rod London Bruins Golf National Talking on Rogers. Wednesday night, national games are back on Rogers TV. 
Watch all the goals, saves, and hits every Wednesday night starting at 7 p.m. Check this out. It's nice, right? My favorite part of volunteering at Rogers has been picking up new tech skills like running cameras or graphics and getting to volunteer with and meet people in a super fun sports-based environment. Did you know, or pardon me, watch Play and Win every Monday night at 8 p.m. with Optimus TV Bingo on Rogers TV. Cards are available at multiple London locations and are good for all three games. Weekly jackpot totals $3,000. Taking a look at our Paul Duarte and Associates shots on goal clock, you can see it there in that third period. 12 to 8 for the London Nationals, but the St. Thomas Stars able to pot two goals here in that third period. And our next contest here on Rogers TV will be game number three here this coming Saturday here at the Western Fair Sports Center. Seven o'clock puck drop right here on Rogers TV as we have overtime coming up. Stay with us. You're watching London Bruin Co-op National Hockey here on Rogers. Wednesday night, national games are back on Rogers TV. Watch all the goals, saves, and hits every Wednesday night starting at 7 p.m. Have fun. Check this out. It's nice, right? My favorite part of volunteering at Rogers has been picking up new tech skills like running cameras or graphics and getting to volunteer with and meet people in a super fun sports-based environment. Game Day London takes readers behind the scenes and beyond the box scores, offering news, analysis, long form and interviews, all produced by local journalists. Catch the coverage at GameDayLondon.com. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, getting set here for our overtime period. 2-2 is your score between the St. Thomas Stars and the London Nationals. Uh, take a look around the league. There is one other contest going on in the Western Conference tonight. Game one between the LaSalle Vipers and the Chatter Maroons. Uh, LaSalle running the Maroon show to start the game there. 5-1, I believe, is the score there. Uh, just a fantastic start for the Vipers. And then also looking in the other conferences, the Kitchener Waterloo team is up 10 to nothing over the Bradford squad. So in the other conference, a rout in that first game, but focusing on the Western Conference again. The LaSalle Vipers, that's the four versus five seed. And their game number two is not until 
Sunday. So again, lots of rest for those players. But again, back on this game, game number two is going to be down at the Joe Thornton Recreation Center Friday night, 7 o'clock there. And then game three, back here in London, 7 o'clock right here on Rogers TV. As we have free hockey, Kyle, overtime. And unlike the regular season, where it was five minutes of three on three, seven minutes of three on three, or pardon me, seven minutes of three on three, we are going to actually have five on five for a full 20 minute frame. So free hockey here at the Western Fair for everyone. A good crowd on hand here tonight, being game one of the Western Conference quarterfinals. And the question is going to start to play in midway through the overtime where we've seen them play, obviously. They've had overtime games during the regular season, but also with it being playoff overtime, fatigue's going to start to kick in where you're now starting to play extra hockey that more than you normally would play. So heading into this overtime frame, we are now officially in the next goal wins this game, and we'll see who wants to take care of business here and take game number one. St. Thomas last season won game one here. Big, big, big lines both out for both teams to start the period. Line guard over to McGowan. McGowan, he'll dump it into the offensive zone. Bowers will dive in against Jenkins. That ends up squeaking past him, picked up by Weingart on the far side. Weingart cross ice, pass on the stick of Bowers. Bowers into the attacking zone. Tries to put it in the middle of the ice, just out of reach of Wood. And they'll be clearing the zone. McGowan banks off the wall. Great stick work by the Nationals. Get the puck into the offensive zone. Quickly turn back over. Still bouncing away. Neither team getting possession. Now on the stick of Wood. Wood tries a nice little move, but stolen by Nickel. Now to Hubis. He'll get the puck up and out of the zone. Wood brings it right back in. Drops for Bowers. Bowers tries to put it on net. That gets blocked by Jenkins. Turn back around now. Hoobin. The captain already one goal tonight. Gets it over to Nickel. Nickel to Levin. Levin takes a big shot. Just misses wide. Nashville's going to try to bring it back the other way. Ryland Bowers. Drop pass for, Bar for Char. Char, he'll bring it in. Just over skates it. Loose puck down low. Just goes through the crease and out the other side. Mill back pass, tries to get it intended to Char, back is blocked, stolen by O'Reilly. Sam O'Reilly brings it down low, over to Char, Char bobbles it at the last second, can't get a clean shot off. Connolly in a foot race with Levin. Levin brings it up to the blue line, but the Stars go too fast and get across the blue line, so the Stars have to dump and chase after it. Pass for O'Reilly. Right on his stick. Riley will just cross the red line, dump it into the far corner. Girth will pick it up. Backhands it a bit high. Stays in play, however. Dobbin will get it right back to him. Now over to Seminara. Seminara brings it into the offensive zone. Sends it down to Luddington. Luddington stolen off his stick by Sned. Back up to the blue line. Girth up to, up to Lorzell. Tripped out front. And that one just goes out of play. Big tip, gets a big piece of it in front of the net. The Seminara. And we'll take a look at this Lucas Char chance. He's able to get this puck down low. Throw it over across the ice, trying to get it there is Char, and he's not able to finish it off. And the Stars are able to go down the other way and generate a scoring chance of their own as the faceoff will come outside of the London end zone. Face off one cleanly by the Stars. Alexander's going to try to put it up to the blue line to get it in the offensive zone for the Stars. Stubgeon's going to be pressured to put it up the wall. Stars try to tip it out front. Bouncing puck out of midair. Nationals go come away with it. Sanity across the blue line. He tries to make a move. Alexander, great stick work, gets a hold of the puck instead. Thompson now down low. Puts the puck up to the blue line. And will clear the zone. Stubgeon will collect it. He's got room to move. Across the red line, he'll just throw it hard into the far corner. Rims around the boards, Ryan takes a tumble. Ends up right back on the stick of Stubgeon. Now to Pace Roth. Pace Roth, he'll just dump it into the corner himself as well. Jenkins will pick it up for the Stars. Pressured by Sanavit, heights off a hit. Gets it up to Vandenberg. 
Vandenberg cross ice path just out of the reach of Franzen. Franzen down low, tried to put it in front of the net. 10 for Vandenberg. Just tipped off his stick as he gets tied up. Standing on the far side. Nice little touch pass, gets it up. Here comes Nickel. He'll bring it across the blue line. Nickel down low, works the puck. Tries to put it up front, it does, but just gets staked down. And Carson takes a tumble. Franzen gets the puck right back. Back on the stick of Nickel. He can't do anything with it. Franzen's down in the corner. He's, not in, a, he's in a bit of pain. Walks out, big chance by Vandenberg. Franzen heading off of the ice. He's, in, he's not feeling it, but manages to get the puck out. Puck back to Nickel. Nickel's got a full head of steam. He's going to try to carry it up the middle. He gets taken down. Stars want a call, but aren't going to get one. McGowan across the blue line. Walks in just offside as O'Reilly and French had that extra step on him. But well, we talk about how in overtime it's next goal wins. And we're going to see how the officials are going to call this overtime as there was a close call there. St. Thomas wanted the trip, but the referees are going to let these boys play and figure out who can win game number one. Stars win the draw. Back to Jenkins. Now over to Alexander. Puck get moved up, tip play in the offensive zone. Now onto the stick of McGowan. Nice lead pass, hits onto the stick of Bowers. Bowers crosses the blue line, tries to get it back to Chard. Chard ends up losing it in the feet of Alexander. It's turned back around the other way. Here comes Phillips. Phillips across the blue line. He's got a, he's got a trailer. Out ends up hitting a skate and goes into the corner. Onward. He gets stripped of the puck. Picked up now by Riley Wood. Wood's going to float it up. Picked out in midair by Alexander as he bats it into the offensive zone. Turned over by Bowers. Bowers lead pass for Chard. I don't think he Ooh. saw Wood there. Now for the puck right inside the, not, the star Ooh. zone. Chard will come away with it. Lucas Chard walks in. Got a chance. Wrap around. Brings it around. And puck stays out so miraculously. <laughs> as Bradford makes a huge play as Lucas Chard almost ends it. Yeah, I thought that this puck was in the back of the net, but what a great save by Bradford, diving across, keeping that puck out. As Chard, you can see the frustration. He thought for sure he had the wraparound and had Bradford beat, but a big save by the St. Thomas Stars netminder keeping this game tied. Weingart, big slap shot. Walks over, bringing in the offensive zone now. Weingart, he's got his man tied up, push him hard into the boards. O'Reilly can't get a stick on it. Now under Lorzel, he walks in, takes a shot, that hits off a leg. Up gets cleared down the length of the ice. Back over to Hoven. Hoven, back to Lorzel. He'll bring it across the blue line. Holds on to the puck, back up to the blue line. Levin, he takes a shot, that one goes over. Hooven picks it up on the near side. Back up to the blue line, Levin, he can't handle the pass. And the puck we sent into the national zone as they get a chance to regroup. Milne, over to Weingart. Weingart, nice lead pass, now left for O'Reilly. Sam O'Reilly to Palmer, Palmer over skates as he goes crashing in. Two on one the other way. Seminar with Levin. Levin walks in, waits, shoots, blocker saved by Ranger. Another chance down low. Puck ends up behind the net. Kept in by the Stars. Seminara, he'll hold on to it. Gets pressured by two Nationals. Gets it back up to Lorzell at the blue line. Seminara again, walks out front. Still trying to get a shot off, holds on to the puck. Now takes a shot, that hits a leg. Follow through with it, catches Milne up high. Milne, just second chance effort, going to get the puck out. On the stick of O'Reilly. In the offensive zone, takes a shot, catches Bradford up high, and he'll hold on to the whistle. Well, what action from both ends of the ice is here's this two on one chance for St. Thomas. Diving there is Milne and takes that pass away, and Joe Ranger recognizes that play and makes a good read with a save of his own. 13-14 left here in the first overtime. Shots are now 
in favor of the Nationals. Big head thrown right along the board by Sanaby. Stars will take the zone. Stubjic racing for it. That one gets sent back in the corner by Dobbin. Thompson trying to rim it back behind him. Jackson Dobbin ready for it. Takes a shot off the post. Closest chance the Stars have had here in overtime. Sanaby comes down full head of speed. Works his way past his man. Carries it behind the net. Sanaby back into the slot. Over to Pace Rock. Pace Rock walks in, takes a shot. That one just a bit too high. Stubbs and collects it on the far side. He takes a shot on net. Alexander puts it up the wall. Picked up now by Dobbin. Dobbin tried pass the tenant for Seminara. He'll collect it and just dump it in. Ranger will take it and hold on for a whistle. 12-22 remaining here in the overtime. Still 2-2. Next goal wins. Man, a good chance by Logan Pace Rock as he got a puck and he had an open lane to go and shoot that puck down inside the same time as zone. He shot that one just wide of the net. Quick chance Ray off the face off for the Stars as here come the Nationals the other way. Walking out across the blue line is Wood. Wood, he gets, almost gets toppled down on the play. Still stays on his feet. <laughs> Loose pucks, tries to put it up the board. Brought up by, by Vandenberg. Now to Char. Char brings it across the blue line. He's going to try to get an opening. Char pushed hard into the boards in a corner there by, Stur or by Sturgeon. Wood gets taken down to the ice. Stars get it to the blue line. Can't clear it, however. And Sturgeon will collect it in the corner. Sturgeon up to Vandenberg. Just misses him and misses Nickel. And he'll go for an icing, so the Stars will have to stay out on the ice. And the Nationals get an offensive zone draw. He got tired, stars out on the ice. He's got Lucas Carson, Talon Palmer, and Sam O'Reilly here. I like that matchup there for the Nationals. As Lucas Carson, Kyle, I think in my mind, has played one of his best games as a London National here in game one of the playoff game. Not too bad of a time to have your best game. Franzen, he's going to try to rush in on Ludington. Left for Connolly. Back up to O'Reilly along the wall. Now back to Connolly. Connolly, nice fake, holds on to the puck. Now he'll move it. Ooh. Off to Carson. Carson will deflect it into the offensive zone. O'Reilly tries to pinch it off, but it gets past him over to Vennenberg. Girth picks it up. Sends it back to Sears. Over to Sturgeon. Now almost stolen again. Now it's stolen by O'Reilly. Sends it over to Connolly. Off the wing to Carson. Now to O'Reilly again. O'Reilly walks in, he takes a shot. Had save there by Bradford. Back out front, tries to get it back on the stick of Carson. Carson tries to put it out front. That gets blocked. Shot for the blue line coming in. That gets goes right on net. Bradford tracks it well through traffic and hangs on. And just a smart play once again by Lucas Carson, recognizing that there was no pass option at the front of the net. Gives it back to his D in Weingart. And we know Weingart has that one-time option, but he elects to use his wrist shot and a good stop there by Bradford. Walking in again, Weingart takes a shot, finds his way through, and Bradford has to make the glove save again. And you can tell when Weingart gets that puck, he's waiting to generate traffic in front so that Bradford can't see that puck. So for guys like Thompson, he needs to get right to the net. Another chance, McGowan holds the line, puts it down low, Thompson will pick it up in the corner. Brayden Thompson spins it around, just bounces over the stick of French. Alexander will collect it, puts it up the wall, bouncing puck goes into the neutral ice. McGowan reads it, stolen, here come the Stars, three on one, walks in, takes a shot, rebound, chance, but Phillips can't get there. Here come the Nationals, here comes Thompson. Thompson tries to break his way through, over to Sandeby, Sandeby puts it on net as he crashes right into the cage. And the faceoff's actually gonna come all the way outside as Sandeby drove the net hard himself. He was not pushed into the net, not carried into the net. He drove the net himself on that play right at the blue line. He does the right thing. Great play by Thompson, and then Sandeby again goes in alone trying to beat and he actually indeed was pushed in. So the faceoff is going to come, going to actually stay inside of the St. Thomas zone as a great play there by Thompson to generate the traffic, basically hold the two St. Thomas Stars defenders right there and allow Sanity to ride over the path. 
as again the big boys for London are out on the ice. Hooban having a conversation with the official trying to argue that Danavi did not get pushed into the back of the net. Face off gets scrum, ends up coming to the stars. Here comes Hooban. He's got 11, 11 with him. Now back down low to Hooban. Hooban tries to put it out front. That gets blocked as it hits the side of the net. Picked up now by McGowan. McGowan, he's going to try to float a home run pass intended for Bowers. Just a bit too far ahead of him. And we'll have a face off back down in the national zone. Yeah, as soon as McGowan got that puck, Ryland Bowers knew exactly what he wanted to do, which was get into a foot race and try to win a puck battle. But unfortunately, McGowan put a little too much on that flip pass and ends up going for icing. And so St. Thomas is going to respond and put their checking line out against this top unit for London. Faceoff comes up to the blue line. Catrice takes a good shot. Love down again. Nationals go try to back, a backhand pass and hit from Wood. Just a little too far ahead of Sandovi. Seminara, he has the puck in the offensive zone. Tries to get it up to Sned. Back to the blue line. Catrice, he takes a shot. Rebound chance. Just bounces over the stick of Dobbin. Loose puck again behind the net. Nationals pick it up and they'll bring it out of the zone. Mill throws it hard around the boards. Behind the net, Bradford comes out to play it. Patrice just gets tripped up. He'll send the puck back into the far corner over to Girk. Now to Seminar. Seminar bounces off a skate but ends up collecting it again and dumping it into the offensive zone. Nationals really trying to force the home run passes. Mellon is basically set up shot right on the Stars' blue line. Ace Rock, he'll collect the puck. He'll bring it out himself. Crosses the red line, dumps it in, puts it right on net to Bradford. As Alexander will try to play it in the corner. Bouncing puck collected by O'Reilly. Sam O'Reilly, he takes a shot, that gets blocked. Pace Rock with the rebound, puts it in front, just misses the stick of Milne. Milne had a beautiful opportunity, wide open in the slot, can't handle the pass. Brought over the other way, Levin over to Vandenberg, he can't connect on the pass. Skating into the offensive zone, just can't head this net. Up comes up the wall, Vandenberg. Drops it down low for Nickel. Nickel got two nationals right on top of him. Gets it back to Vandenberg. Vandenberg gets it over, broken stick on the play from Alexander. Pace Ross, bends it off the wall, up to, up to Sandovi. Sandovi looks, nice cross side pass, gets it across the blue line. Tries to get it right back over to Sandovi, he was streaking down the middle, great defensive awareness by Jenkins. Puck set back down, picked up now by Connolly. Up to Sandovi. Sandovi, nice touch pass over to Thompson. Now to Ryan, Ryan takes a shot, that goes off the leg of Jenkins. Back out front again, that hot bouncing puck almost goes great to, to, to Sandovi in the slot. Sned turns it over, gets it to Phillips. Phillips across the blue line, he gets stalled up there by Cliff Ludington. Phillips now into the slot, loose puck, trying to get a shot off, that gets blocked. Another chance, hits Ranger up high. Here comes Sandovi, Sandovi's going to try to catch the, the defense sleeping. Comes across the blue line with speed, Sturgeon puts him hard into the boards. Thompson gets a bouncing puck, tries to get a shot off his Ryan, but can't get anything on it. Tip play in front of the net. Girth got a bit too much on that. It almost ends up forcing Brighton up Rob Bradford to make a save. Connolly now, he'll collect it. Throws it hard off the boards, picked up by Bowers. Bowers across the blue line. Drop for Thompson. Lighton's got to hustle back as two stars coming off the bench. Now pass up for Bowers. Bowers tips it, so no icing on the play. But the Stars will try to clear it out quickly. Bowers over to Wood. Wood tries to throw this feather right on net as charge streaking down the middle. That ends up going a bit too far to Bradford, and he'll hang on. Yeah, we're starting to see lanes open up here in this overtime period as Bowers tried to swing that puck down low. Try to find a tip-in shot as, again, the big boys are out on the ice. And notice now they've made a bit of a change on the defensive end with McGowan and Weingard now paired together here in overtime. Try to get any offense they can with their defensive pairings. As here come the Stars again. 
Right across the blue line, Nickel. He's going to try to bring it right into the slot. He gets stalled up a little bit there in front of the net. McGowan, he tries to get it out. Spin shot goes right beside the net. And held behind the net by Weingart. Weingart up to McGowan. McGowan's got room to move. He's going to take advantage of it. Over to Char on the far side. Char trying to throw it right back over to McGowan. McGowan throws it on net, that gets tipped, and that will go over the net, not a play. Nashville's really forcing the issue with those cross ice passes. Just can't connect on them, though. The Stars doing a great job of getting stick in lanes and denying those opportunities from becoming, uh, from going to fruition. And that's the key here in this overtime session for both teams is where, again, where you're in a next goal win situation, you want to make sure your passes are crisp. Another chance down low. Nashville's trying to put it on a sharp angle there by Carson. Kicked aside by Bradford. Carson will still maintain possession. Gets the puck back over under the stick of O'Reilly. Damn, O'Reilly just trying to deke his way in a phone booth as he gets taken down behind the net. Looks for a call, not going to get one. As the rest have put the whistles away here in the overtime. Cross ice pass. Star is going to try to break out. Long reach pass intended to hit Seminara, but just out of his reach, so we'll have a nice and bring it back down to the Star's territory. Again, a bit of offensive creativity there by Lucas Curzon, where if you're able to make those types of moves and just try anything to throw it towards the net, there's the possibility of it going into the back of the net. So good offensive ability shown here by Lucas Carson here tonight. Face off one cleanly by Snedden. Puck stolen right at the blue line, brought over by Palmer. Palmer walks in, takes a shot. Gets tipped by Girth and out of play. And a shot like that is certainly okay if you're Talon Palmer. If you can get it off a stick, you're gonna generate another offensive face off. And that's what you want is four minutes and 45 seconds to left here in overtime. Shots are now 38-34 here in this contest. Nationals win the faceoff cleanly. Weingart takes a shot. And that one finds its way, or Connolly does, finds its way right on the target. And Bradford makes the glove save. And yeah, not a lot of time there for Connolly as he just basically had to float one onto the net as there was a stick right away, quickly getting into that lane. Right down low, Thompson fouls for the puck in the corner. Nationals will come away with it. Sandeby in front of the net. Loses the puck right in his feet. Backhand chance by Thompson. That goes off a of body. Puck comes up, still can't clear the zone though. Thompson holds it in. Loses it, kept in by Sandeby. Thompson takes it, Cowley takes a shot, tipped out front by Ryan. Ludington finds it on the other side. He gets stripped of the puck. Stars on the counter attack. Get it across the blue line, drop for Nickel. Sent down low again. Sned, he tries to work his way out front. Loose pucks, taken down in front of the net. Nickel again, he takes a shot. That one just flies wide. Thompson will just collect it, throw it out of play, get some fresh legs out there and slow the pace down. The Stars come that close from ending it. Yeah, a smart play there as they drop this back. Again, another stretch pass, a bouncing puck, Ranger with the save. And Connolly, Connolly with the takedown out in front of the net to not allow any type of bouncing puck to go towards the open cage. Puck banked off the wall. That's going to go down the length of the ice. No icing on the play. The Stars quickly going to try to move it back the other way. Is Lorzell. He'll move it up. Banked off the wall. Comes out of play. Here comes Hooven. Hooven across the blue line. Looking for that outlet pass. Still waiting. Just throws a backhand along the wall. Picked up now by Chard. Charge, cross ice over to Bowers. No. Bowers brings it in. He's in a foot race alongside Lorzell. Gets it over to Girth on the far side. Girth banks it high up the wall. Can't get it past McGowan as he'll go right back in. Pass intended for Hooven, a little too hot for him to handle. Now picked up by Hugin. Hugin brings it down low. Back into Lorzell. Lorzell over to Girth. Girth will send it down low over to Hooven. Hooven to Levin. Levin, he's going to try to find an opening. He's working his way in. Doing his magic, brings it up front, takes the shot, puts it right on net. Knocks Ranger to the ground with that shot. 
but Ranger holds on and keeps it out. And again, just the shiftiness of Michael Levin, able to work that puck atop of the blue line. And a good job, puck protection, sees that he's got Huben right on the doorstep, no one else in front of the net. And once again, Joe Ranger comes up big on that play. He's able to find that puck and not allow Huben to have a rebound. Face off one by the Stars, but nobody there to jump on it except Sam O'Reilly. Sam O'Reilly, he's going to bring it in. He's got full head of steam. Stalls up right at the top of the circle. Sends it behind the net. O'Reilly's going to try to find it. He's got French in there digging away for help. Sent out, now brought up by Phillips. Phillips will take the zone. He's got two with him. Cross ice, walks in, takes a shot. Ranger with the save. French can't get a hold of it. Now it's banked off the wall. That puck just goes up and that will go into the Stars bench and out of play. Yeah, so the faceoff will come outside of the London zone as the St. Thomas Stars put that into their own bench. And once again, good speed shown by Sam O'Reilly trying to outduel the de defenseman right there and he wasn't able to win that battle so he likes to try to stop up and he ended up sending it down low into the corner. Face off one quickly there by the Stars. They'll dump it in. Seminara, he'll try to put it in front of the net. He gets stopped. Now on the stick of Luddington. Luddington moving out. He tries to put it up the wall, tries to get it over to French. Quickly turn back over. Seminara collects it again. He'll bring it in the offensive zone. Tries to take a shot. That gets blocked by Connolly. The two of them collide rail right on the rail right on the board. Seminar again with the puck. Tries to put it on, gets stopped up, so only floats it on. Puck comes right in front of the net, and Ranger will grab it and hold on. 144 remaining here in overtime. Neither team giving an inch. Yeah, smart save there by Ranger as he knows his team is tired to get fresh legs. Out here for the final minute, 45 in the first overtime. Connolly, he's going to send it around the boards, picked up by Carson on the far side. Carson does get pinned along the boards, trying to get it past Sned. Now it's pinned by Dobbin. Carson throws it behind the net, ends up hitting the back of the net. Connolly's going to try to move it out. Sned just continue to be uh, just a pest behind the net for the Stars. Nice lead pass up onto the stick of Carson. Carson across the blue line. Nationals have four. Brought it up front. Scores! Lucas Carson ends the game in overtime. What a goal. Just a lucky tip finds its way past Bradford. And Lucas Carson, we talked about it all night, has been a great game. Is the overtime hero. Well, what a lucky bounce. It goes off of the skate of the St. Thomas star defender and into the back of the net, beats Bradford five hole. And what a moment for Lucas Carson. His first career GOJHL playoff goal, wins the game in overtime, wins game one for the Nationals. And game two will certainly be exciting down at the Joe Thornton as the Nationals win game one. Three more to go if they want to win this series. Absolutely, and with that, we'll be back with our final thoughts and our three stars here on the Lynn Bruin Co-op Nationals Hockey on Rogers TV. Wednesday night, national games are back on Rogers TV. Watch all the goals, saves, and hits every Wednesday night starting at 7 p.m. Terrifying. He has his eyes set on the heavyweight title. The kingdom is mad. Valentina Shevchenko! She is a straight up assassin. Alexa Grosso! The serious title challenger. Oh, the rock. Two championship fights. First of all, the kingdom is mad. Did you have fun? Check this out.
looks nice, right? Favorite part of volunteering at Rogers has been picking up new tech skills, like running cameras or graphics, and getting to volunteer with and meet people in a super fun sports-based environment. Did you know all the camera operators for tonight's game are volunteers? Rogers TV volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. If you're interested, visit rogerstv.com slash volunteer to sign up. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, Lucas Carson is your overtime hero as the London Nationals win 3-2 over the St. Thomas Stars in just dramatic fashion. I mean, it's not the way that you would draw it up, but it's a goal nonetheless. And we were talking about how Lucas Carson, we thought this was his best game in the National. You talked about off the air, he's trying to feed Sanity down low, but it ends up going off of a St. Thomas star skate. And you feel for Bradford in that situation because you're not gonna blame him for all three of the goals that the National scored here tonight. That one going off a skate, he's sliding across to try to stop Sanity on a tip shot, but instead it's another deflection, beats Bradford five hole. And now London has a one to nothing series lead. Absolutely fantastic overtime period as well. One minute, 11 seconds left in the period uh, when that goal finally finds its way into the back of the net. Both teams chance after chance after chance. Bradford standing on his head, Ranger standing on his head. Both goalies were phenomenal throughout this entire contest. And uh, if this is what we're looking forward to in games two, three, four and onward, this is going to be a phenomenal series. Well, what else can you expect between these two Highbury Avenue teams? And this series is going to now rely on goaltending the rest of the way. Joe Ranger played, like you mentioned, exceptional here in game number one. Bradford stood on his head. He did have to leave the game for an equipment issue, but we had everything like that tonight. But other than that, Bradford played unbelievable, made a stretch pat save late there in the third period to keep this game tied into the overtime session. If it wasn't for both of these goaltenders, we might have been looking at a much higher score here tonight. Absolutely, and it really came down to both teams' defenses really locking in on the top goal scorers from each side. Uh, Chard got chances, Bowers got chances, O'Reilly got chances, but that defensive uh, effort for the Stars kept them locked out. On the other side, Hooben had chances, Nickel had chances, Levin had chances, and all three of them got locked out by the Nationals D. It was just a defensive battle throughout this entire overtime. Nobody wanted to give an inch, and it just happens to be that fluky goal that flies off a skate and ends up being the game winner. Yeah, no one in here had a multiple point night. It was all just solo efforts. The shorthanded goal by Chard Bowers had the open tap and Michael Levin on the five on three, the one time shot. Huben, the captain, getting the game tied, being able to get it to 2 1, and then obviously Levin getting the tying goal. So, certainly for Lucas Carson, he'll go home happy tonight that he got his team a 1 0 lead here in this Western Conference quarterfinals. One down, three more wins the Nationals need. Stars, a lot of work to start as we will send it down low to ice level with our three stars, right? All right, today's three stars are Connor Bradford with 35 saves on the night. Our second star is Joe Ranger with an impressive 38 save night and our game winning goal, our very own Lucas Carson. Stay tuned for our next home game on London Brewing Co-op Nationals Hockey on Rogers TV at 7 p.m. local time this Saturday. This is Aaron Gazzola signing off.
it, uh, change it for anything. Uh, not only do you take the obviously overall win as the individual, the team gets a, a silver medal finish as well. Uh, you walked away from that tournament with a heck of a lot of hardware. Is it hard to find places for it all at this point? You know, last year with the team win, you get the individual <laughs> win this year. Is, it, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? Yeah, you know what? For my university career in golf, I've been pretty lucky. Um, I've had an individual title in a tournament and then um, winning OUAs, obviously. Um, but actually kind of funny, the, the trophy is sitting in my living room right now. <laughs> my parents uh, have given me a spot to put it for a year and then I'll have to, have to bring it back, unfortunately, um, for next year. But yeah, it's, it's in my living room. I also got a, a dormy head cover. So these, it's like, it's a head cover that's made out in Halifax from yak leather. And um, they were gracious, Dormy was gracious enough to donate over a thousand dollars worth of head covers. And in golf, if, if you know golf, the Dormy head covers are what you want. So I was able to get one of those too. So yeah, pretty happy. Uh, overall, I know the, the season's fairly short, obviously, and got to be, as far as teams for our Mustangs, probably one of the shortest, uh, obviously feeling pretty good about this